my apologies. I, I was here. I just couldn't get in. No worries. We were uh, clearly remiss in keeping you updated. <laughs> Not at all. As usual, I'm working right up to the last minute trying to get a presentation put together. Well, um, should we should we have coffee for another 15 minutes or no 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm ready when you are you know you don't do presentations you just talk off the cuff that's that's cool um, what? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> you know what paul you got you got yourself on the high end of those that have been joining us for the last while you people are interested in what you got to say we'll see hey if ralph can... We're, so anyway, let me let me start this officially again. Um, happy Wednesday. Uh, yeah, Mel isn't here. He said he couldn't make it. He knew that I was going to ask him for video of his of proof of his calling, and that's why he's not here. <laughs> um, this morning we have a presenter that has been calling for thirty five years, originally from. New Hampshire, currently living in Tennessee, spent a little time in Texas in between. Um, he's done a lot of things in the square dance business. Um, and, and we've got to thank him because he's done a lot of things that have, have done a lot for the for the square dance business. Um, Ego Records has put out some pretty good music. He recently um, got himself away out of that. I can't think of quite the right terminology. Um, and informed me that he's going to be starting another label very soon um, called Next Chapter Recordings. Um, this will be interesting. He is currently keeping some parts of square dancing alive because of being the current owner of Hilton Audio Products, which is which some of you may have heard of it. Let's just keep it that way. Um, and dosido.com where he will be adding more useful stuff. I just looked yesterday, Paul, there's not a heck of a lot there, but nope. Um, and we will be doing something a little different this time than we usually do. Um, and that is we've, we've stayed away pretty much from advertising. But Paul may just throw in a few plugs for things he's selling this time. Um, and in fact, he's done a talk for us before where he said, I try really hard not to plug my stuff just to talk about the topic. But he has permission to do that this time because it's, it's part of the talk. Um, and before I get myself into further trouble, um, Oh, I was trying to read what that note was. Before I get myself into further problem, trouble, let's have a big hand for Paul Cote. Uh, Cody, I guess, these days. <laughs> Take it away, Paul. Hi, everybody. I appreciate this opportunity. And uh, this is something that I've been passionate about for decades. Um, I want to share a few things before I actually start the presentation. And I'm going to try and keep things as succinct as I can. But you all know that I have a tendency to ramble on when I get passionate. Um, first part is going to be very difficult for me. Um, a lot of you have dedicated a portion of your life to square dancing. I literally owe my life to square dancing in the most, the most literal sense of the word. I owe my life to square dancing. And I want to tell you why. And this is something that I'm going to write about in the next epistle of Paul on Facebook. Um, basically, um, I get a lot of friends that, I, that care about me and they say, why are you putting all this stuff up on Facebook? I said, because it's cathartic for me. It's nice to finally be able to tell my story in a way I've never been able to tell it. And bottom line is none of you have to read it. Just freaking delete me. It's problem solved. Okay. Block me, whatever you want to do. But um, I want to tell you something that I've only shared with my closest friends in the past couple months. I've never shared this before. Uh, when I first started square dancing in 1987, I, uh, There's a warning on my presentation skills, but it's not until I give you my PowerPoint. So uh, uh, expect a, a warning to come in a little bit late. Um, 
when I started square dancing in 1987, I was 22 years old. Um, I had a 19 year old girlfriend, quite frankly, the hottest girlfriend I have ever had in my life then. And now, I mean, just flat out gorgeous. Okay. Uh, we went to a parade in Hampton beach, New Hampshire, and in Hampton beach, they had a float go by with square dancers on it from the, from the, from the, uh, down East Westerners of Kittery, Maine. And on this demonstration float, they had, uh, a, uh, a, a, a square of dancers dancing. And then the announcer said, hey, come on down tomorrow night to the Kittery Grange. We're having a free introduction to square dancing and we would love you to come. And it sounded horrible. Worst idea ever. Uh, my girlfriend turned to me and she said, oh, that sounds like fun. Let's go. And I said, no, that doesn't sound like fun. Let's not go. Then my hot 19-year-old girlfriend reminded me exactly how cold the winters get in New England. So I went. Uh, so I went to the first night at the uh, introduction of the Down East Westerners. This was 1987, like I said. Uh, as a short aside, uh, I'm going to mention, I mean, many of you know that my best friend since high school has been Ted Lazat. Uh, I took Ted and his very hot girlfriend at the time out to dinner the following Sunday. And after dinner, I drove over to the Kittery Grange and I parked the car and I said, Ted, we're going to go in here for a couple hours and dance. Uh, if you don't want to come, no problem. Uh, if you want to get a ride home, I'm sure that somebody will get you an hour ride home. That's no problem. But, uh, but uh, here's the deal. I'm going in. You're welcome to come. Cindy's going in. You're welcome to come. Uh, but if you don't, you're on your own. And so that's how I literally strong-armed Ted Lazat into going to a square dance the first time. Okay. Um, I did the same thing with calling for him. At one time, there was a time that the two of us stood on stage, and it was Ted Lazat nudging me in the ribs saying, where's my corner? Those days have long since gone. Ted Lazat has become one of the finest uh, mechanical callers in the world. And I, I will never be that. I have no desire to be that. I, I, my desire is to be an entertainer. I don't care about 27 variations of an OC do It's not me. Okay. So um, anyway, I was square dancing uh, with this extremely hot girlfriend. I'm going to give you one more aside because I just want to keep you here all day. Um, the first thing that the caller did at Kittery Grange, and I'm not even going to mention his name because there have been issues over the years, not, not with me, other issues. Um, he said to me, uh, the first thing he did was get us all squared up. And his first call was four ladies promenade to another square. And my smoking hot girlfriend promenaded to another square. I turned to my right. And now all of a sudden I'm looking at Ethel blue hair. Not my idea of a date night, not my idea of a good time. Second tip, he did the same thing. Before the third tip, I went up to him. I said, the next time you take me away from my smoking hot girlfriend, I'm out of here. Don't do that. Okay. If you're teaching classes and you take and you take your, your dancers, your, your couples, and you separate them because you think that's going to make them better dancers, I say bull. I didn't come to dance with Ethel Blue Hair. I came to dance with my smoking hot girlfriend and hopefully, hopefully get lucky a little later on in the night because I went out dancing with her. Okay. Stop it. Don't take your dancers and separate them in your classes. That's bunk. Okay. Now, if somebody has a particular problem, if somebody's particularly struggling, take them aside, offer them the opportunity to have a different partner to help them, but don't force them to do it. Don't ever do that. All right, uh, and enough of that aside, we're going back to the reason why I literally owe my life to square dancing. In our first two months of square dancing, we uh, danced with the Down East Westerners. We decided one night a week wasn't enough. We decided to join the Jesters in Summersworth, New Hampshire. We decided to join, join the Queen City Promenaders in, in Manchester, New Hampshire. And we were dancing three nights a week classes, learning how to dance. I was also working a lot. I didn't have a decent job. I was working for a tannery 
And if you don't know what a tannery is, you don't want to know what a tannery is. It was absolutely vile. It was horrible. Uh, I came home from working a double shift. And I found my house empty. Everything that could be lifted was gone from the house. If it was too heavy for her to lift, she didn't take it, but everything else was gone. Quite honestly, I don't blame her in the slightest, but obviously it was a little bit of a, of a shock to the system to come home from working a double and find your house empty. Over the next two weeks, um, I had the darkest thoughts of my life. And in the days at that time frame, you used to have your answering machine. You didn't have your voicemail on your phone. You had your answering machine and you listened to the messages that came in without ever answering the phone. You just ignored them when you chose to. And many of those messages were from the square dancers that we met at the square dance clubs. And uh, they were begging me, you know, Paul, come on out. Come on, we'll, we'll, we'll get you out of the part. It's not a problem. We, we know what's going on. It's, it's, it, it's, 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 come on, come on down. We want you to dance. And it wasn't a recruitment thing. It was they liked me for some strange reason. Um, and they wanted me to be there. So about two weeks into this, there was a banging on my door. Not a, not a small knock. It was a banging. And I ignored it. And there was another banging on the door louder this time. And then a third time, I finally decided I'm gonna go answer the door. So I took the gun out of my mouth and I went and answered the door. And it was square dancers that were gonna drag me to a dance that night. So when I tell you that I literally owe my life to square dancing, it was square dancers that forced me to put that gun down, to take that gun out of my mouth, answer the door, and go out square dancing. So whatever your level of de dedication is to the activity, I respect that. But don't ever, ever challenge my love, level of dedication to the activity because I owe my life to it, and I will continue to give back to the activity for the rest of my life. Okay, on to a little bit more jolly subjects. Jolly for me, anyway. Um, Dan, Don, can one of you help me figure out how to get my screen up on the board? Sure can. So down there on the bottom of your thing, there should be a share screen button. Okay. And if you click that, if you need audio with it, there's a little thing for share computer audio. If not, no worries. Can and I still talk or do I need to have? Yes, that will, okay. that will still let you talk and it will play computer audio or, um, you know, you don't have to share computer audio and okay. uh, you can choose which screen you want to share. And it looks like you're well on the way and ha ha, here we go. We are now okay. seeing so I need to get this oh, thing to slideshow. How do I get this thing to slideshow? I think it's F5 or that slideshow button over there, about five to the menu options to the right of where you are. Up in the menu bar, file, home, insert, draw, design, that one right there. Yeah. Uh, from beginning. There we go. Ta-da! Right. So uh, one more aside before I get into this. Many of you notice that I'm vaping. Okay, and many of you will give me your unrequested advice. If you want to give me advice, schedule a Zoom session where you can be the presenter. Um, I was up to 425 pounds at my highest. I've tried every diet in the book, Nutrisystem, Weight Watchers, Atkins, Low Carb, No Carb, whatever carb, okay? Nothing has ever worked for me. I'm a grazer. When I get bored, I eat. I started nicotine vape, and yes, I'm very, very aware that nicotine is addictive, but I don't have the smoke component in here. I don't have the carcinogenic, the, the, the big carcinogenic part, carcinogenic part of it, okay, but I do realize the risks. I even went to my doctor, 
Okay. I brought this to him and I had him look at my chart uh, of my weight loss. So far, I'm down 150 pounds due to vape. And I said to my doctor, vape or weight, which is worse? He said, Paul, at that time, I was down 140 pounds. Uh, he said, Paul, officially, I can't recommend that you vape. Unofficially, keep kicking ass, okay? Bottom line is, if you don't like the fact that I vape, turn my screen off. Not a problem. I don't care. All right, so here's my presentation and, uh, and my apology that's going to go along with it because I've already been a little bit rough around the edges as I've spoken, so... Uh, I want to try and figure out a way to put my little pictures of you up on the top instead of on the side, because I keep on looking over to the side and I don't like that. Uh, I guess I don't know how to do that. So I'm just going to, oh, there it is, whatever. All right. I'm just going to ignore you. And so at this point, I don't know what time it is. We're officially beginning the presentation. Recently, a good friend of mine of 35 years gave me the, the ultimate com compliment as far as I was concerned. He meant it as a joke, but I loved it. He said, Paul, I have always looked at you as the P.T. Barnum of square dancing, and I love that term. So I actually went, I was at the Gatlinburg Convention. I went next to the, from my Hilton table, I went next to, next door to Suzy Q's um, uh, uh, engraving table. I said, make me a badge. I want to be Paul Cody, the PT Barnum of square dancing. So I'm, that's, that's what, that's how I'm going to build myself from now on. And this presentation is let's get some bucks through the door. Okay. If you have delicate sensibilities, I suggest you probably not continue with me, please exit now. This presentation is rated G general audiences. Not going to happen, folks. Okay? Not going to happen. This presentation is not rated G. It's, pre pre it's rated PG-13. Okay? Some material may be inappropriate for children under 13 and people watching the Zoom session. Bottom line, I'm not going to apologize for who I am anymore. Uh, uh, Don mentioned that now I'm living in, um, in Tennessee. Uh, I was living in Texas for about 12 years. Uh, I'm thinking about writing a song. Uh, it's going to go something along the lines of all my exes live in Texas. That's why I reside in Tennessee. We'll see how that works out. Uh, uh, somebody mentioned that that may have been done or something along those lines might have been done before, but you know, I can play, I can play coy. Anyway, bottom line is I'm a regular guy that has been saved by the square dance activity and the square dance activity as a whole has made me a better person, but I'm still, I'm still that guy. I've had three, I wish I've had a slide for this. I've had three male, three positive male influences in my life. My first positive male influence was Oscar the Grouch on Sesame Street. Loved him, loved him. Okay. He was crass and he was rude, but down deep, Oscar had a heart. The next positive male role model in my life was Archie Bunker on, four, on 704 Hauser Street. Okay, Again, same situation. Archie was inappropriate in every way, but you knew down deep inside Archie was a good man. He had a good heart. He cared. Okay. And if you didn't see that as you were watching All in the Family back in the 70s, then you missed the whole point of the show. He was the car he was the buffoon. They were making fun of his inappropriateness. And the third and the worst, and again, I'm expecting to see all the little boxes of people disappear down below me right now. For the past 30 years, the biggest male influence in my life has been Howard Stern. Now, many of you may remember Howard Stern from the, from the days of, of putting mayonnaise on girls' butts and throwing slices of bologna at them and stuff like that. Uh, 
over the past 30 years, Howard has evolved. And yes, every once in a while, he does throw something like that in. But if you would take a moment and put aside your, your, precon your preconceived notions about Howard, you'll recognize that he's become one of the finest interviewers in the world. He will have people like Sir Paul McCartney, Sir Elton John, Miley Cyrus, Billy Joel, um, uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, many, many, many hours of the Donald, all in interviews. And he does some of the most in-depth, most interesting interviews with these people you've ever seen. His interview with Lady Gaga is what inspired me to do the song Edge of Glory on Ego which was the beginning of our label, okay? She sat with him for more than two hours. She sat there with a piano, a grand piano, just her and the grand piano, and she sang Edge of Glory. And she explained what the true meaning of Edge of Glory is. It's not what you think. Please, if you have a time and you have some, uh, a, an open mind, search some of these interviews. You'll find somebody that you find interesting. And he'll make it, he'll make it, he'll make it, he'll, it's, it's bottom line is he's not the same man that he was in the 80s. Neither are we. All right. So um, Donna has given me green light to sell. Truth be told, I don't give a damn about selling. I give a damn about getting butts through the door. I started dancing in 87. In 1982, the National Convention, and I apologize for this next slide. I don't know how to make a chart, but I'm gonna, try, I'm gonna show you my best attempt at it. In 1982, the population of square dancing was 40,000 dancers at the National Convention. This year, there were two, 2,000. We have lost 95% of our population in the past 40 years. Something is wrong. Our leadership is failing us. People who were the megastars back in 1982 are still the megastars today. And yes, a few of us have broken through to a certain level. Again, a couple, I mean, the, the last caller that I know that truly, truly made it at the national level was Tim Mariner. Then there was a gap of 20 years, and then Hunter Keller made a decent plug at it. But really, if you look at the flyers on the tables today, it's the same people from 40 years ago. It's the same national convention of 40 years ago. I have had an ongoing battle with the national convention saying that it is their responsibility when the crown jewel of square dancing every year is the only opportunity that we get to be seen in the national spotlight, whether that national spotlight be on the news or even on the Jay Leno show where they make fun of us, but it's the national spotlight. And I have begged them for decades to step up and recognize that that is our best opportunity to bring new butts through the door. They should be sponsoring a hall at the National Convention every single year. And that hall should be open to non-dancers to come in and have an introduction. And that should be run every hour of every day of the National Convention. And they should follow that up with an opportunity to learn more in that local area. For decades, I have been saying this, and I've been ignored. While we have lost 95% of our dance population, we've got to figure out a way to figure out a way to get butts through the door. And nothing that we're doing is helping that. So I invested $12,000 of my money. A very difficult situation when your future ex-wife has shut you off from every bank account you own. And yeah, 
part of that was I had to give up my ego recordings. I've never made a good money on, on ego. I made a few bucks here and there. I made a ton of money on Hallelujah, and I've lost my butt on Love Hurts. But I had to sell that. That label was me. It was my one opportunity to share who I was with, unapologetically. And I had to give that up. That's the only way I've survived since May. But I invested a bunch of money that I don't expect to see a return on in seven years. I, I mean, excuse me. I, 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 not seven years, three or four years. I had to, I bought 10,000 copies. I'm, it's going to take me 7,000 to break even. And this is what I'm doing. I made a brochure available for sale on HiltonAudio.com. And if you act right now, you'll get this genuine Dimel pendant absolutely free. Um, it's a three-fold brochure. It is a uh, very high quality, thick stock, gloss finish. And it's available at a very reasonable price on the website. But I'm not here to sell it to you. I'm here to tell you how to use it to get bucks through the door at your local club. This is the front, front cover of the brochure. It has something that you're gonna see throughout. It shows action, it shows dancing, it shows young people, it shows smiling, it shows excitement. It even shows a little bit of romance down there. It's all about presentation, folks. As we go through this brochure, you're not gonna see a bunch of old folks. You're not going to see poofy, frilly dresses and crap like that. You're going to see normal people dressed like normal people having a normal people good time. This is the back of the brochure. On the back of the brochure is that, that big white space. It's, it's just generic information. That white space is designed for you to take a label a sticky Dymo label or whatever, and replace and put it right over that white space with your personal group's information. I'm coming, uh, oh, we're starting a new group. Okay, And you're going to notice that I do never, I, I really try to avoid the terms class. I really try to avoid the terms student. Okay, I use perspective dancers. I use groups. I use dance opportunities. I don't say class. Class has a negative connotation to it. Students has a negative connotation to it. It makes them feel less than. We need to make them feel more than. So I suggest you take your information, put it on a label, say, hey, come on down. We're dancing here at this time. Bring a friend. Here's the specific information of where we're going, okay? Here's our contact information. Reach out, call us, put it on a sticker, put it right there, and you have not done anything to, to compromise the integrity of the rest of the brochure. It looks like you have spent a ton of money on brochures that you made yourself. If anybody decides to purchase these brochures. And again, I'm going to discourage you from purchasing this the entire time. But if anybody decides to purchase it, by purchasing the brochures, there will be an opportunity for them to fill out all that information on a form. And that form will go up to dosado.com and it will show your dancing opportunities. That's one more app advertisement opportunity for you. Is it going to be worth the damn? I don't know. Before I go further, this brochure is designed for one thing only, to get butts through the door. Where do I get the term butts through the door? From the movie Sister Act, where Whoopi Goldberg, a Las Vegas showgirl singer, is put into a convent to protect her from a mobster that wants to kill her. And they decided to use Sister Mary's, Mary Clarence's musical talents to make her the head, the head of the choir. 
what the Reverend Mother didn't expect was that she was going to change the uh, the reverent music of the church to more pop music, more popular music. And when the choir got up to sing the first time under Sister Mary Clarence's uh, direction, they started doing crazy dancing, crazy, you know, I mean, not dancing, but uh, singing. It was, it was pop music. It was stuff from the 70s and 80s, you know, all, all of the showgirl kind of songs. Well, at the end of the mass, uh, the Reverend Mother got a hold of Sister Mary Clarence, Whoopi Goldberg, and just tore her a new one, just absolutely reamed her. How dare you use, you know, this, this crazy music, this boogie woogie on the altar. Why would you do that kind of stuff? Okay, it's not the way the church goes. And Sister Mary Clarence's response was, I thought the purpose was to get butts in the seats. We don't have seats, I'm not selling seats. I want to get butts through the door. And I've taken that directly from the movie Sister Act. And if you take the time to go and watch that movie, it's very family friendly. There's nothing, nothing uh, offensive about that movie at all. I think it's certainly, I think it's rated G, which is better than you listening to me right now. Um, but that movie parallels our situation within the church. She walks into a church that is empty. There's nobody there. Nobody wants to come to church. Why? In her words, because church is a drag. But then she incorporates this music and people start showing up. And by the end of the movie, the Church is jam-packed and full. And yes, folks, I understand it's a movie script. But look what's happening to us. We've lost 95% of our square dancing population. We need to figure out a way to get out. Is this the answer? I don't know. But nobody else is doing anything. Nobody's doing anything. We're watching our activity die in front of us. So I'm going to do my part to get butts through the seats, through the doors. This brochure will never get people to come back a second night. That's up to you. This brochure, I sincerely believe, will help getting people through the door. But in order for them to come back, you as callers, you as clubs have got to do the work. Callers, you've got to be entertaining. It's not about choreography for new unknown dancers. They'll do ladies' chains all night long and they will not be bored of it. Only you as an experienced caller will be bored of it. It's not about you. It's about the new dancers. I did the keynote speech at the national convention with Ted Lazat in Springfield, Massachusetts several years. And we quoted a very wise man, a very wise man that said, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. You're the one folks. The many is our activity. Put our activities needs ahead of your needs. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. Do you know the wise man that said that? Mr. Spock in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, where he gave his life to save the ship and everybody on it. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. And this is my rock that I'm going to die on. I'm going to do something to help this freaking activity or I'm going to die trying. So take this brochure and use it to get butts through the door and then do your part to be good entertainers as callers and as clubs to be a welcoming environment. 
Don't take people from their partners without them giving you permission. Don't treat them as less than. Don't treat them as simply recruits. Don't show off at what you can do and do star tips in the middle and round dances in the middle and all this other crap in the middle. You're here to try and save square dancing, not all the other dancing. Square dancing. Make a point of this. So now we can continue with the flyer or the brochure rather. As you open up this threefold brochure on thick cardstock, glossy, available at hiltonaudio.com. This is the inside page. And things are gonna happen here on this page that uh, you may not agree with. Well, first of all, we don't charge 20 bucks for a night of dancing. Why not? Square dancers that are in the activity right now are cheap bastards. All right, even for PG-13, bastards was probably a, too, a little bit too strong. Okay, I didn't need to say that, I apologize. Dan, edit that out of, out of, out of the video. Um, <clears throat> that, again, that, that was inappropriate, okay? Square dancers that are in the activity now are extremely cheap. They feel that they're entitled to be able to go out square dancing four or five times a week for three or four bucks a night. Okay, and don't add this out one out, Dan. Frankly, that's bullshit. We don't owe the activity and the people who are in the activity the ability to go out and dance for free. We also don't need to have a fun night that's for free. Why? Because a person coming out to be entertained doesn't understand that, that it has to be free. They understand it has a value. Okay? So if you want to, go ahead and keep on charging your club members three or four bucks a night. But when somebody comes to the door the first time, they will not bat an eye at dropping a $20 bill on the table for a couple to dance. They won't drop it, they won't bat an eye. What happens when you charge 20 bucks for a dance? Well, first of all, you can pay your damn callers an appropriate fee. Callers do the same work and more work as DJs do and we make 20% of what they do. Enough. You might also figure out a way to put a few bucks in your treasury. Oh, and here's a thought. You might also find a few bucks to buy one of the new, the Social Square Dance Experience door hangers, available now at hiltonaudio.com. But again, as much as I keep on harping on that and joking about that, that's not what I'm here to do today. I'm here to get butts through the door. I think I need to switch my screens. Dan left the room, so I'm in big trouble. Dan, get your butt back here. <laughs> All right. He went through the door. What are you so, looking for, Paul? What, I, I need to change my screen to a different screen. There's a, you can either stop sharing and then start sharing with a different one, or there's frequently a button near the top that says, share other screen i think i don't see that because i'm not the one sharing right now but um okay welcome back dan thanks for nothing thanks for nothing dan <laughs> appreciate you. I, you as i'm doing this i'm just imagining vernon jones who's not on video or audio just commenting in the background because vernon and i are very much alike when it comes to thoughts and, and i and i would love at the end of this if, if, if vernon has a word to say so this is the Don't inside of the brochure. <laughs> there he is. Love you, Vernon. <laughs> Damn guy took me out to Applebee's the other uh, a month ago. God, Applebee's. Ugh. Anyway, um, this is the inside of the brochure. And I want to address a few things about the brochure that are being made as comments. And I'm going to explain why the comments are what they are. Um, This brochure answers the 10 main reasons people don't want to square dance, the misconceptions they have about our activity. 
And quite frankly, it gives a smart ass answer to every single one of them. Okay, what if it wasn't only country music, the banjos, the fiddles, the steel guitars? Well, it's not. It's so much more than that. Okay, what if I have two left feet? Not a problem. You have two left hands, potentially a problem. You know, what if it wasn't the same 10 boring movements over and over again, like a line dance? Oh, wait, 55 in the SSD list. It's 5,000 in the Burleson book. Okay, bottom line, every single thing that's a, that's a reason to say no to square dancing is debunked in this brochure. And my job is singularly to debunk the misconceptions and give people, take away reasons that people say no to our activity. Now, comments have been made. First of all, there are four typos in the brochure. I will give a $10 reward to the first person who finds me the fifth, okay? Because I don't know if there's a fifth, but I want to correct it if there is. I found it. We'll talk, you got it, Vernon? There's two Elton Johns listed. That's one of the four so far. Missed that one. I only found two. All right. So let's let's continue because I don't want to, I don't want to keep you guys here all day. Um, the complaint, the first, the number one complaint is it's so busy on the inside. So busy. There's so much there. And my answer to you is this. This brochure wasn't designed for you folks. It wasn't designed for my generation. It wasn't designed for your generation. It was designed for people younger than Dan's generation. Okay, the social media generation, where they take multiple sources of information all at the same time, and they just compact it into a big, huge blob right in front of them. That's the big, huge blob. It's designed for the next generation. We don't need to, we don't need to recruit more 70-year-olds and 80-year-olds. We need to be recruiting 50-year-olds and 45-year-olds. We don't need to be recruiting teenagers. Yes, it's nice to have teenagers. It's a great thing. But they will not be part of the activity for 20 years when they go to college and get jobs and get married and go to school and, and, and have children who then finally leave for college. And then Mr. and Mrs. Perspective Square Dancer are, have the choice of either sitting in the house and staring at each other and wondering why they got married in the first place or go out and square dance. So use this information for that generation. It's not busy to them. There's another reason that it's as busy as it is on the inside. And that's because frankly, square dancers, square dance callers, square dance clubs, square dance organizations, sadly, all steal. They will take this brochure, they will scan it, and they will make it theirs as if I had nothing to do with it. I've got $12,000 invested. I need to make that money back if I'm ever going to do another one of these. So I'm doing this so busy to protect myself because when you scan it and when you copy it, not such a quality product anymore. Okay. At the same time, however, I invite you to take any information on this flyer and incorporate it into your promotional material. I've even made Word documents with all of the text that if you ask me for, paul at hiltonaudio.com, I will give you all of the text written out. And you can use it any way you want in your own promotional flyers or brochures or whatever you want. I'm giving that to you. Every single picture on that brochure was provided by Ray Owens, a square dancer up in the Ohio area. He will give you every one of those pictures to use as your own, as free public domain. So don't go to hiltonaudio.com and purchase the brochure, now available at a discounted rate for the month of August. Make your own damn brochure. Take my information. I'm giving it to you, folks. 
The only thing wrong to do here is to take and make a digital copy of my brochure. If you copy my brochure in its entirety, then you are stealing from me. But take every single part and make your own. Go ahead. I invite you to. More than two years ago, well, many of you know that I own the basic mainstream and plus handbooks that were produced by um, uh, whatever, so sets in order 40 years ago. Now that sets in order uh, handbook has been reproduced about 12 times. It's almost never changed. It still looks like absolute crap for what we sell in, in today's age. And I had people that have been on my case for years to try and print it again because I ran out. In order to buy it and make it uh, affordable to sell to square dancers, I have to buy 10,000 copies at a time. And with those brochures, it was taking me four years, not those brochures, those handbooks, it was taking me four years to make my money back. I want to give back to the activity that saved my life, but I also don't have the deepest pockets in the world, folks. You know, I, I gave up my job to work for Hilton. I thought it was my business. I worked for nine years for my business without a paycheck. Not one paycheck. Every dime went to my future ex-wife. I did it because I figured I was the owner. Not according to her claims right now. But fortunately for me, that all of a sudden puts me in a situation where I've worked for nine years for no labor, for no pay. The IRS will enjoy that one. So, um, yeah, there's a lean on the business. There, uh, there, there, there's been people talking about trying to acquire Hilton Audio. Uh, so my lawyer immediately slapped a $552,500 lien on the business to make sure I get paid for my last nine years. The business, the cash value of the business is $45,000 if anybody wants to buy it. 45,000 plus the 552, you know, let's call it six even and, we'll, and, and, and it's yours. I'll, I'll, I'll release it to Mary Ellen and she can, and say, go ahead and sell it. I'd love 600 grand right now, but I don't have that. Okay. But the point is this, um, those square dance handbooks, people, I mean, they got downright angry at me while I couldn't afford to drop many, many, many thousands of dollars to make the next copy of the same 1982 brochure, uh, uh, handbook. I couldn't do it. Didn't have the money. And they were downright nasty about it. Um, I found a site uh, from a club in Merced, California. I don't know if it was a club or an association or a call. I don't know who was behind it. But if you right now would like to download the entirety of the basic and mainstream handbook owned by me, Two years ago, I asked them to remove what they were giving away for free, my property. And I even got, went as far as to threaten legal action. It was an empty threat. I didn't have any money for a legal action. Okay. But they recognized that it was, that it was an empty threat. Because right now, if you Google Merced and Basic Mainstream Handbook, they are still giving the entire mainstream handbook away for free digital download on their site two years later. Square dancers are supposed to be better people than those. They're supposed to have a better, higher moral compass. Square dance callers are supposed to adhere to a, uh, the call lab code of ethics. My shit is being stealed stolen excuse me steal um so i'm doing what i can to protect myself from having this material stolen number one i'm giving you free and clear rights to use any parts of it you want ray owens is giving you free and clear rights to use any of the photographs in there and by the way do you see those photographs in there young smiling attractive action all throughout there. Down in the bottom, you see some children dancing. 
Okay, you do see an occasional old fogey uh, right in the center to the right, uh, right here. Okay, you do see another one down here. But bottom line is, this is all about the people that we are trying to attract. It's not about us and our old fogey selves. And by the way, young people aren't interested in going out to dance at seven o'clock. They're starting to dance when we go to bed. So think about starting a program that starts at nine or 10 o'clock at night, because that's when you're going to attract young people. So this is my brochure. Again, you'll find the four typos. You will find, you know, that it's difficult to read in some places if you don't have the actual original in your hand. Okay. But if you happen to go to hiltonaudio.com, where it's on sale for the month of August, I have this brochure. I also have the door hanger. The door hanger is much less busy. It says dosado.com. It says the social square dancing experience, not experiment. I changed it a little bit. Okay. And it has 20 bucks on it. Again, you want to charge five? Put it on your sticker and charge five. You're an idiot, but charge five. Okay. On the back of the brochure, more pictures of people in action, dosado.com. Absolutely no experience necessary. A QR code that brings you to dosido.com. And a big white section with generic in information there. By the way, that generic information is pretty good stuff, if I do say so myself. But if you don't like that, take your label, put your label on the brochure and sell it as your own. Bottom line, get off your ass and get butts through the door. And if the leadership in your area isn't doing this kind of thing, shame on them. At the Gatlinburg convention last night, I uh, not last weekend, I had a very interesting breakdown of people that I spoke to. 60%, the vast majority, when I went up to them, I said, can I just give you a brochure? No sale pitch, nothing. No sales pitch. Can I give you a brochure to help you uh, promote square dancing in your local area? I just wanted to hand them a brochure. No sales tactics at all. 60% took it and they took a quick look at it and they were pretty much, eh, seems interesting, but it's, it's not, you know, there's no hope. They were pretty much resigned to our activity dying. 20% of the people were pretty enthusiastic. They took it, they read it over, they came back to me, they asked questions, they meant, made comments on things about being too busy. I explained to them the reasons why. They were really interested for a period of time. Um, and they, they made it a real, uh, a few of them bought bro brochures. And again, I told them all, don't go, don't buy it. Make your own. I don't care if you buy the damn thing. I do care if you buy the damn thing, but I don't care if you, I don't care if you buy the damn thing. Okay. But use the information and get butts through the door. That's what it's all about. Get the butts through the door while we still have 5% of what we had in 1982. It's gone. We're going to watch it die. And I, for one, a man who literally owes his life to this activity, am not going to sit back and watch it die. Now, a good friend of mine accused me of potentially becoming, quote unquote, the next Nasser. Those of you who have a history in the activity understand that uh, Nasser, who goes by a different name now, by the way, so I'm not even mentioning a real person's name anymore. Um, he did some pretty, pretty difficult things for the activity. Um, and he really, he was a cancer on the activity for a period of years. Um, and many of you don't know that I am the proud founder of a website that went up for a full year called nassersnastynotes.com where I collected every single email, every single note from my, from all, all my interactions with him. And then I started receiving emails from other people who wanted to share them too. And I posted them all up online too. 
Okay, I never allowed anything to be edited, and I put in all of his responses. But bottom line is, Nasser's nasty notes revealed who Nasser had become. But even as the founder of Nasser's nasty notes, I recognized that there was a time that Nasser was doing good for the activity. When he first started, he was making positive changes. He was really stepping it up with the marketing. He was really doing good things. And then something along the way snapped, and he became all about him. Um, that's unfortunate. It really is unfortunate because he was doing good things. He was the first person that I saw really stepping up and trying to make a difference. And so I respect the first few years that he did that as much as I condemn what he became. And perhaps I will become that person too, but I don't believe I'm doing that right now. I'm still putting the needs of the many above the needs of the few or the one, me, okay? Don't buy my shit. I don't care. I've got 150 MAs left to sell. Once they're gone, I've already got the new owner picked out. We've just got to work out a thing. But that'll take a few years to sell 150 MAs. Um, but I'm, I'm not, I don't care. Um, I'm going to build me some cabins in Tennessee, and I'm going to run an Airbnb. Okay. Uh, physically, I can't do this stuff anymore. I can't get out there and dance. Okay? And, and this will never be the face of square dancing. Okay. This is hideous. Even if I have lost 150 pounds, we need to get beautiful people out there. We need to get the hunters. We need to get the, 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 the Amandas who I see on here. We need to get those beautiful people as our, our, our image. You may or may not have noticed on Facebook, I put up a post where I'm finally, years later, investing in um, the new handbooks, illustrated handbooks of square dancing. Instead of breaking it up to basic and mainstream and then plus, I'm now going to do it. The SSD program is first book and then the uh, mainstream plus handbook as, as the second handbook. And uh, they'll be available as soon as I do a couple hundred hours of editing. But if you notice that pictures of the video that I put up, you probably noticed seven cameras up in the room. In addition to those seven cameras, every single one of those dancers was wearing a 4K camera on their, on their shirt. Okay, this is gonna be a hell of a project. And every one of those people is beautiful, young, attractive, positive marketing for our activity. Bottom line, putting Ethel Blue Hair up on your brochure is not going to help. Putting the big puffy skirts on your on your shirt uh, on your site is not going to help. I did a presentation for a college association back in New England ten years ago, maybe fifteen years ago. At that time, I sent out a thousand requests for from people who stopped dancing or didn't come to dancing and asked them the reasons why. I got almost four hundred responses back. And the number one reason was a factor of 10 over the number two reason why people don't want to square dance. The number one reason is they don't like what we wear. I don't care if you like it. It's not about you. It's about the many. I don't care if you think you look good in that big poofy skirt. Most of you don't. Okay, guys like backsides. They don't see backsides in that damn poofy skirt. And it may be crude and crass, but it's marketing, folks. You don't put a bunch of 80-year-olds on your website and say, hey, come and dance. We have a great time. No, you get your beautiful people out there. You take those people and you put them together. And that's what you sell with. Go to Ray Owen's site. Get these pictures for free. Take this information, make it your own, or at absolute worst case, here's the brochure, here's the hanger, buy the damn things. They're on sale for the month of August. The point is, 
there's 10 reasons in here why people say no to square dancing, and I'm debunking them all. It's busy, but there's a reason for it. So I'm telling you, take this material. If you want the text, I will send you the text in a Word document. No charge. Just email me, paul at hiltonaudio.com. If you want a free copy of the brochure, I'll send you a free copy of the brochure. Paul at hiltonaudio.com. Give me your mailing address. Digital copies of this brochure are prohibited. I say by copyright law, but by honest, I have not paid for the copyright yet. But bottom line is, I am prohibiting you. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. But do something. Get butts through the door. Get people into this activity before it's dead. Take the time, callers, to train new callers. And if you're a caller and you're not a good entertainer, by God, don't get out there and do demonstrations and show people what a, what a non-entertainer looks like. You can be the best choreographer in the world, but unless you can do a nice song out there, you're not going to catch the attention of a prospective dancer. They don't know about the technical things. All they know is, oh, He's singing Billie Eilish. Oh, he's singing Lady Gaga. Oh, he's singing Elton John. So if you're not a good presenter for outside demonstrations, get somebody who is. They don't even have to be a damn caller. Just teach them to sing one song. Market yourself properly, folks. So this is the end of my hour-long sales pitch for my materials at, at HiltonAudio.com. I hope that you recognize that it's not just a sales pitch. It's about putting the needs of the many above the needs of the few or the one, and it's about getting butts through the door. And if we have time, I don't know what the, what the, what the protocol is here. I would love to talk and answer and ask questions and anything you'd like to do at this point. But I realize that I have rambled on for an hour now and my voice is a little bit crackly. Um, so um, I'm going to release my screen share here, or I think somebody already re released it for me, I think, maybe. Uh, uh, no, nope, you are still in control. Now it's released. And uh, now... I, 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 folks, I, I, I lay my head on the, on, on the uh, chopping block for you to give me your, your perspective, okay? But bottom line is, if your perspective is different than mine, it's wrong. I Go love ahead. to hear, Paul, your enthusiasm when you speak. And as a result, I forgot to look at the time and interrupted about one hour. So I'm going to do the formal ending and then we'll stick around as usual, for conversations, questions, answers. I hope that you'll record those conversations, questions, answers as well, because they're important. Yes, yes, that's part of it. Um, so with that, uh, thank you guys all for coming. We've had some faces we haven't seen before, and we hope we, you guys will join us again um, in future sessions. We, I want to thank particularly... Paul Cody for joining us and with his giving, impassioned plea, giving his two or three cents worth of actually negative cents worth. He's looking for your money, but that's, as I say, unusual for these things. But thank you, Paul, so much for, for taking the time um, to share your enthusiasm and some really good points. Um, Again, as I usually say, if you've only scheduled an hour for this Saturday morning, um, feel free to disappear without apologies. Or don't. But, <laughs> but please, if you want, um, stick around. We'll talk some more about this in general. Um, I will try to keep track of who has hands up. Steve, Steven is the first already, so you get to talk first. Let's I've, talk about this shit. I've got several notes that may or may not be appropriate to talk about. We'll see what happens. Um, this is all can... about inappropriate, Don. <laughs> let's, let's do it. Um, Stephen, you took for... your hand down, but do you want to talk? You got some yeah. questions? Go for it. First, first off, uh, awesome presentation, Paul. I loved it. Thank you. Um, yeah, I've always wondered, um, 
I've, I've asked the same question at every convention I've gone to. Why is there not an open room for non-dancers? I've demanded that's always it. That's always bugged me. I've it's demanded like, it. Why are we not opening it? It's, it's, it's pointless to have a convention if you're not going to invite people to come try it. It's our single best advertising opportunity of the year. And I, I was, I was at the, uh, let's see, 82, was that Houston or was that the one before Houston? Uh, I don't know. 80, I was at the early eighties when, when Houston hosted it in the S and they had in the Astrodome. It's one of the most beautiful pictures I've ever seen. Everybody from Texas made the state of Texas in the Astrodome. And then they filled in all the other states and countries that came to that convention and they filled the stadium. When I bought Hilton beautiful. Audio Products, when I bought Hilton Audio Products, one of the things I received was a framed picture of the convention in Anaheim, which had even more than that 40,000 thing. And I got into a knockdown drag out fight with another person who uh, was really upset with me when I stood up and I said, this claim two or three years ago, maybe four years ago now, of the Guinness Book of World Records largest uh, group of square dancers is pure bullshit. I got people, I got into a big fight with a good friend of mine who is uh, uh, loyal to the NEC. Um, personally, every experience I've had with a green coat has been horrible. And um, I finally broke through to somebody. Somebody sat down with me for 45 minutes in Waco at the uh, at Wade Driver's weekend. And, uh, and he understood. And he said, I'm going to make this happen. And that was supposed to happen in Atlanta. He was the guy who could do it until the green coats got him. And they shut it down again. Shame on them. Anybody else feel to come in, want to come into the fray? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a shame. I, I, I wish they would open it up, it, it, but they say they can't. It's like, why not? It just doesn't make sense. So, Paul, one of the things you said reminded me of something that I used to tell my dancers 45 years ago when we were starting a new class. I used to tell them it's your job to get people to come the first night. In your case, it was getting the brochure to do it. And then I'd tell them, but it's my job to want them, to make them want to come back the second night. Amen. Amen. Uh, I don't know who can do this, but I saw that there was some kind of comments on the side. If we can get those read, I'd like to respond to whatever whatever they say. Oh, can somebody read them? Is Andy, there anybody that has that? Reading? Sorry, say again. Somebody just signed out and they left a comment as they did it. And uh, I, I'd like to take that comment and respond to it. I, I can't see it right now. So if somebody can, oh, I'd like oh. to. Uh, so John and Jesse McKinnon, the, I appreciate Paul's enthusiasm. However, it would be much better presentation without the crude comment. Let's attract people to the activity by putting our best foot forward. I have opinions on this, but I'll let you go first. Uh, I, I, I simply I simply say this. I make no apologies for who I am. Simple as that. I have spent 55 years controlled, first by an abusive father, then by a dedication to a very loving mother, then to do, into a marriage where I was, quite frankly, controlled. And on May 21st, I finally became a free man. And this is who I am. Like me, hate me, your choice. I don't care. But bottom line is, this is who I am. This is what I offer. If you don't like it, no problem. If you don't like me, no problem. I still probably like you. Like Clark, you know? I, I, I like Clark. It scares the shit out of me. Oh, I said shit. Shame on me. But bottom line is, that's who I am. Dan, let's hear your, your thoughts on this, and then, Bill, we'll get to you. You got your hand up. Oh, you know better than talk when you're muted. Dan, you're muted, damn it. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, hey, Vernon, can you have uh, 
Scott Bennett try to hit me up on Facebook and I will get him there. Um, yes, uh, I will. And, yeah, my um, I I have a, a number of thoughts here and I, I will try to drop them out because I know Bill had his hand up. But uh, the first is that I think that the the thing that we need to present in square dancing is the thing that Paul mentions right early on in his presentation. That is, we need the community who will show up and knock on your door when you haven't been around for a while. And that's um, that I think is the challenge that we have these days is when I go to a standard straight club, I don't get that vibe. When I go to the gay clubs, I get that vibe. Um, and the other thing is on the uh, crude comments, welcome to 2022. Anyway. It's, it's time to get angry. It's yeah. time to get angry at what is what has become of our activity. Well, and right. language has changed in yes. the past. past okay. and, and I can and I can get much more crude. I was trying to be respectful. <laughs> so, so um, what I'm Dan get... was saying there, uh, but just let me let me bring this in yeah. real quick. Uh, one of the things that I mentioned in the brochure is we have groups for everybody. We have groups for uh, for uh, young, old, a uh, gay, straight. Uh, handicap, uh, we have we have them all, okay? We just need to figure out how to promote them, okay? And bottom line, like Dan said, it's 2022. We need to start being more accepting of everybody and everybody else's lifestyles. Bill, did you have a comment? Well, I, I've, I'm hearing things from Paul that is probably things that I've had in my head for all the years. As most of the people in the audience in this group know right i'm not actively calling i i can't but i keep involved with the activity by attending and listening to active and i'm finally hearing somebody finally come out and say something that's been there but and as my mother had an expression call a spade a spade not a blanking shovel you can fill in the blank what's the blank what's the blank i missed that it starts with an F. Okay. And then <laughs> rhymes, with, rhymes with ducking. <laughs> okay. Bottom line is bottom line is this: we cannot afford to be restricted by folks with delicate sensibilities anymore. We have to step up and yep. be willing to take a risk. And again, perhaps in a short period of time, I will become the second coming of Nasser. But I'm not that right now. Right now, I'm a guy who has a passion a man who literally owes his life to this activity. I have been depressed my entire life. Uh, it, shortly in the next coming couple coming weeks, I'm gonna put up the next epistle of Paul talking about depression and its realities, okay? Since May 21st, I have not had a depressed hour in my life. I'm a happy man. I'm happy with who I am for the first time in my life. And who I am right now is somebody who's pissed off at what this activity has become. And some of the people, like I never did say in my presentation, there were 20% of the people that just plain absolutely looked down their nose at me. They were at that convention. They had a freaking frown on their face. It's like, why are you here? There was a caller there who kept, was there bragging about how the fact that he quit a couple of years ago and he has no interest in going back. Why are you here? Come, help. Or leave. That's, that's, by the that's, way, that's Bill, what I said. You know, that's what I said. I, I, I don't do. I am not in the activity anymore. But I want to help to participate. I was. I started dancing in '77. My first uh, convention that I went to, uh, I learned started taking calling lessons around 1981. I went to the convention in June of '81 in Seattle. Twenty-seven thousand square dancers was the total at that one. They did a thing on one of the night where they had us out in this big football stadium. And it was to have 18,520 dancers in this one place dancing to one color. That was in 1981. Yeah. And I, I, I thought, I hadn't heard the exact numbers as far as for this year. And that is, that is shocking. Absolutely. Five per five percent of what we were in 1982. Bill, I started. 
dancing, granted it was traditional squares, 1958, I think. Um, I was never of seven. Um, and uh, what was I going to say? Oh, and I've basically been active doing next to no calling or dancing for the last 25 years. But I feel by doing these um, Saturday Zoom sessions that I'm doing my part, two things. One is to give back to the activity. And two is to keep me involved in, a, in an activity that I love. Um, uh, also, here's a blatant, <laughs> blatant ad again, but I'm also doing Wednesday closed groups of me teaching mental image. and um, Don't sell on this platform. And I will be starting a new class. Oh, I'm charging about two fifty per per hour and a half session. It's not selling; it's covering expenses. Uh, but thank you for the reminder, Paul. Um, also, as a reminder, Paul will be joining us again in in two weeks. Um, I hope you still have that on your calendar. I do. And he won't be talking about Paul or such. I can't remember, but it's basically about entertaining and how that's the important part and we'll work on you know one of our square dance skills with that but we'll talk more about that later um, i want to mention here that um i started dancing in 1987 and there are four people right in this prison right in this situation that were the premier callers in new england at that time they were they were people who inspired me to to uh to to call uh ralph peacock uh, was was the, the caller for you. I believe it was heel and toe at the time. Um, uh, maybe conquer coach at the same time. I'm not sure. But bottom line is he was one of the premier callers in square dancing at that time. One of the people who inspired me. Uh, Don Beck. Uh, I, I went to his school. I went to his mental image school. And man, I was going to go there and show off exactly just how damn good I was. You go to caller school and you want to show off how damn good you are. You're not at a caller school to, to, for the right reasons. You're going to call our school to find out what you don't know, not what you do know. Okay? I was teaching a lot more than just mental image, man. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, you were teaching the whole but, the whole thing. Um, you Clark, Baker, Go ahead. <laughs> Clark Baker, uh, I wasn't listening. You're right. You're absolutely right. I was just going to go and I was going to show off because I knew better. I mean, hey, I had two years of experience at that point. I was the damn best, best damn caller in the world, in my humble opinion. Okay, Clark Baker's here. Clark has always scared the crap out of me. OK, he's never given me reason to be scared of him. He's always treated me with 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 kindness and respect, but he scared the hell out of me. OK, now here's the situation. Clark Baker should never do a demonstration ever. OK, he's a terrible he's a terrible performer. He's a fantastic caller, but he's a terrible performer. OK, so he should not be out there trying to sell square dancing to beginners. He should be out there trying to sell square dancing to high level dancers of course because he's one of the best in the world at that but i think that 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 clark is one of the people who understands that we all have strong points and we all have weak points I, i'm not going to go walk into a hall and try and, and 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 break you down mentally i don't have the skill set for that clark could break your head in the 30 seconds flat charlie trapp is here again he was another one of the top callers in new england at the time so it's really great to see these people still involved and still caring enough to listen to this damn idiot that came up when and started to call when they were already at the top of their game. And Bill, I mean, the fact that you say that you don't call, um, uh, uh, again, uh, he's not here right now, but I know he's gonna watch this, okay? Far as I know, there's no video proof that Mel calls. I'm still looking for it. I see Mickey has joined us in Germany. Welcome aboard, Mickey. Um, the other, I, a comment, I can't keep my mouth shut. I get, I get the privilege of doing that hosting emotion. Uh, it's good. But, uh, as far as Clark trying to sell this to the general public, he's got something called charisma and a way of entertaining people by who he is. Um, and that's just one of many, many aspects of choreography. And I wouldn't put that down. Or, and I'm not, I'm not, uh, Clark, Clark knows I'm not putting him down in the slightest. I'm just I saying, know, but we, not all everybody, have, we all have strong points and we all have weak points. But not everybody knows that you're, that, that Clark knows you that well. <laughs> Clark, Clark, please, would you, would you, would you, would you <clears throat> tell them, please? Please, please, Clark? Uh, I know, Paul. But no, <laughs> you're killing me, man, you're killing me. 
Clark, um, you've said a hundred times you're not a singer. You've said no, it. No, I don't times. sing. Okay. Exactly right. That's what. That's my point. That's my point. He's he's brilliant in choreography, no doubt, but he's not the performer that's going to attract somebody off the street. This will never be the face of square dancing. I may be the voice. I, I've got a decent voice. I can be part, I can be one of the voices of square dancing, but I can never get up. Even if I lose another hundred pounds, I still can't get up there and be the face of the activity. We need the beautiful people for that. It's marketing folks. One of our two Kevins has his hand up. Let's hear from the UK. Yeah, hi. Um, I was just actually, you know, gonna follow on from some of the points that Paul made with regards to, you know, once you've got the people through the door, you need to do all you can to keep them. <clears throat> One of the things that actually, uh, my wife's from Sweden, and one of the things that they do in Sweden, which we don't do in the UK, which is one of our big problems, is in the Sweden, all of the top name callers and your better entertainers are the ones that do the beginners groups. They're the ones that teach beginners. They're the ones that bring in the reception classes that get the people not, they don't necessarily get them through the door, but they make sure once they're through the door, they keep them. Whereas a lot of the clubs in the UK uh, tend to actually put their beginner callers and their newer callers and their trainee callers on the sort of like new entrance classes, which means they're they're losing sort of huge percentages of the of the people they've managed to attract through the door by not giving them that sort of like top end experience once they're there. So this is something I've been banging on about in the UK for several years, comparing it with the Swedish market that I'm, I'm familiar with. So. They need the, 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 the well. new dancers the new dancers have got to feel like they are the primary reason for the the group existing they need to be made to feel like it's all about them not all about the people that are already there the uh that's a perfect point kevin i, I it brings back a memory of many years ago one of the more popular, well-attended clubs in the area who eventually evolved to being mostly running A1 dances. Um, for you New Englanders, it's Yankee twirlers. Um, they called me to, to do a date, to find a, a date, mutual apartment date. They said, we've got, you know, a few A1 things. You seem to be busy on them. Um, we do call it, have a, main, a plus dance. And then we have a beginner's dance here, but you wouldn't want to do a beginner's dance, would you? And I said, there, there's no reason <laughs> that new people in the activity shouldn't enjoy the, the more experienced callers and not just get the new callers who, again, what you're saying, show, put your best foot forward to the new people and really get them hooked. And they said, oh, you wouldn't mind doing that? Good. And it was the biggest crowd they'd had in a long, long time. Um, dancers don't always seem to understand what's going on. Come on, Vernon, kick my ass. <laughs> it's too easy a target. Amen. <laughs> so, Paul, I got a question. Your brochure has a bar barcode on it, or whatever those cross yep. code QR, QR code. QR code. What what it tell me if I took a picture of it? Right 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 now, all it does is direct you to dosado.com. Okay. It will eventually my my goal is for dosado.com to be the, the premier source for non-dancers to come into the activity. And that's what my goal. Um, most of you nobody knows, as a matter of fact. My plan um for the next uh several months is on the 15th of this, of September, I'm leaving for Italy. And uh, I will be there for six months. Uh, I uh, during that time, I, there are three dance leaders that are uh, that I'm training, and uh, we're going to have a crash course. I call it Square One Italy uh, for one square for each of their groups to learn the complete SSD program. I'm going to do my 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 level best uh, over three days of dancing to teach them the SSD program in 20 hours. Um, they will then each run two sets of SSD classes while I'm still in Italy and I will assist them to the best of my ability. Uh, I have a professional translator working on taking the 
uh, the definitions and completely translating them to Italian. Um, and we're going to make a go of bringing square dancing to Italy in our form of square dancing. Um, and if you have seen any of the videos over there, the one of the leaders named Alfredo uh, is uh, doing uh, demonstration groups and the demonstration groups, again, young, attractive, energetic people, uh, but they only know how to do the pre choreographed uh, uh, demonstrations that he has shown. Uh, so my goal is if we get two squares uh, of SSD dancers from every program, we're going to run three separate programs in three separate parts of the country and two programs each. I'm hoping that we at the end of this, we have 12 squares of prospective dancers in Italy to bring square dancing to the to the activity uh, to the country of Italy. Um, that's my goal for the next six months. And that's what I'll be doing over there. And when I come back in March, I'm going to be obviously well just because those of you who know me understand that uh i will be on a uh, on a mad tear trying to do what i can to help um and that's my plan that's what i got going on and uh, uh again i saw another comment go by i think it was from dan uh, if it's related to this discussion uh, please somebody read it and and say what the discussion was i uh, i think the last couple in there uh, aren't particular they're kind of meta to the discussion mine was just that yes i dissed on straight square dancers earlier and that was an overstatement um i will be helping a straight square dance friend with uh, home improvement projects sometime really soon so yeah um I, I had a discussion with a dear friend of mine um uh, uh darren galena's partner tom is a dear friend and uh he saw the video that i had of of dancers uh for the promotional uh uh for the handbook and i was able to get uh, one gentleman of color whatever the proper terminology is now i mean i'm an old man we we used to call you know whatever the term is whatever the positive term is i was able to get one person of color into that program uh because i think it's important to show diversity it's important and he said to me he said well he said i really would have liked to see a gay dancer in there i would have liked to see a uh an asian dancer in there and most of you don't know i mean my i have two kinds of women that i like okay i love small asian women and i love uh uh you know scottish english women with red hair and ivory skin those are my two those are my two dream girls um so i told him thomas you know damn well if i could have gotten myself a nice attractive asian girl in that in that square i would have had her there in a minute i couldn't do it okay i paid them thousands of dollars to dance that day they were paid model dancers and I paid thousands of dollars to do it. I have $22,000 worth of camera equipment that I bought for this project, okay? To produce the next Square Dance Handbook is gonna cost me a grand total of about $65,000, okay? Who else in the activity is gonna step up and do that? Because I'm gonna be doing it on my credit card because I don't have that money, okay? But yes, I do want to be inclusive, but I also have to be understanding to the fact that there are the delicate sensibilities of square dancers won't allow me to show you know a, a couple of men swinging and, and and holding each other and things like that i have to be respectful to that because this is marketing material and i have to sell it so as much as i would love to show uh uh, uh darren and, and tom in a swinging embrace i can't do that i do want to make sure that it's that there's an article in that uh in that new handbook that's going to talk about the lgbtqia plus six yztlu community um but i can't make that the focus i have to have i have to in i have to take this in small steps okay I, and and bringing in a diverse square uh as part of my demonstration group uh i have to be respectful for the fact that we have too many people in the activity still that are, you know, of the old white puritanical uh, belief system, and they will not accept that, nor will they buy that. Unfortunately, Paul, you're correct. Um, so a couple of comments in your brochure, you listed a lot of different countries. I'm surprised you left Sweden off because as Kevin reminded me, they have a very active program. In fact, we usually have two or three Swedes join us on the Saturday session. Um, 
absolutely should have been included. Absolutely. Yeah. I just didn't think of it for at the moment. Uh, and uh, I will make sure that it's in the next copy if I ever have a chance to reprint these things. But I have to I have to sell these first. Okay, I've got to sell these first 10,000 available at HiltonAudio.com on sale, on the sale for the month of August. <laughs> um, another comment you when you were talking about getting new people in and well, first of all, I've been of the opinion for, for years, when you do demos and things, you definitely want people not to say, ooh, that's fun to watch. You want people to say, I can relate to doing that myself. And the costumes that we wore in the heyday is something that most people can't relate to doing. If you say, oh, I can't wait to dress up like Barbie, but most of them you know, dressing down these days is, and, and what you have in the brochure is something I always agree to. Um, the also, as far as charging people for the first night, um, people say, come for nothing the first night. I've always felt that people feel they get what they pay for. And if it's nothing, they're going to get nothing. And you charge them a decent price and they're going to appreciate more what they're doing. In fact, I think in general, people should charge more for classes than they do for regular dances. It's an incentive for people to get through the classes so they can go to dances. And that's the case in most places. Um, you have people that do most other activities. Lessons are more expensive than, than the activity itself. Um, and yet we have that mixed up and confused in the wrong way around. Absolutely. Absolutely. We need to charge appropriately for our for our product. A movie right now is $14. Um, okay. You you go out with your, your, your partner and you buy two movie tickets, a popcorn and a couple of drinks. That's 40 bucks. Double that $20 that I'm suggesting we charge. And callers are working for a pittance, an absolute pittance. I was talking to Rick Hampton the other day. He was driving three and a half hours for a $150 dance fee. One of the... the the differences, of course, is that square dancers, once they get hooked, tend to go three, four, five nights a week, whereas you typically only go to the movies once a week. We don't owe them that. We don't owe them that. If they can't afford that, we don't owe them that. But if I, we decide I agree. we want to invite them and, 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 and give them a break for coming multiple times, then come up with a break for a multiple uh, dancer. But bottom line is, we owe them a good night of entertainment at a fair price. Um. And Bill, I want to throw in more, one more thing before you get to take your hand down. Um, Paul, I had the opportunity to have somebody look at your brochure who was a non-square dancer, who is a, and pretty much knows nothing about it, is a 25-year-old, so is the population we're interested in, um, and who is a professional in the marketing field um, relatively recently because of graduating from school and still and in, in, in thing. And I have a list of comments that if you're interested in hearing, I can read some of them to you, but please do, uh, please do. Well, I, I will later. Let's, let's continue this discussion first. Paul, uh, Bill rather, what's up? Well, I, something that Paul said, the, the obstacles that we run into with calling or with dancing uh uh did excuse me i lost my train of thought it derailed don said one thing he said he said movies said you know movies. but so much has happened to they don't have to go out to have a good time they have with the, the computers and games online and stuff they uh it, it's it's becoming more difficult to get people to come out to an event so i don't know i don't know the exact answer to it there i'm just pointing out that that you know and, and you throw into the mix the fact that older dancers from two three decades ago are either just not dancing anymore or have gone across the rainbow bridge as we like to call it with our our furry friends it's just a lot of factors like that is is throwing it in there. So I know what I want to say, but it's not coming out. I'm coming out right, so I do apologize. But it's just 
a lot of a lot of obstacles have come in to the fact the fact that we're not getting the people we should have to make the activity more appreciative to the whole I'm sorry I'm, okay I've lost my thoughts so I'm going to shut up now <laughs> interestingly Bill, enough Bill, Bill when you talk about people going to the movies now the movie theaters are having troubles too because we stay home and watch Netflix on on fancier TV agreed, sites agreed, absolutely you don't oh, have to leave home and cheap to have popcorn a, you don't have to enter, yep you don't have to leave home to be entertained Here Bill in Bill you're absolutely right and the answer in my opinion is to drag them kicking and screaming the way I was I was blackmailed by sex with my girlfriend okay I I dragged Ted Lazard kicking and screaming look at what Ted Lazard is today he's one of the finest callers in the world and yeah, we don't need callers we need we he never would have been that if he did not come dragged and left in the car and given the choice of finding a way home or coming in and dancing. Okay. So if you haven't heard enough of my voice yet, you could always pick up a copy of Houston. We no longer have a problem. It's a CD by me available at hildenaudio.com on sale for the month of August. Gene. Yeah, I want to say firstly, I, Paul, I really enjoyed the presentation. Uh, one of the things I did have, as a, it just occurred to me, I had a question that happened while you were doing the presentation, and I just remembered. It. Uh, you mentioned you had uh, done a survey as to what were the primary reasons that people who have not taken up the activity uh, gave for not taking up the activity. One was the number one, as you said, by a long shot was they don't like what we wear, uh, what they see other dancers wearing. Uh, what was the number two? Uh, uh, I can't tell you specifically what the number two was, but most of the, of the reasons that I got back where people said no are the reasons that I use in the brochure and okay. try to debunk all of those things. That's great. Perfect. To the best of my ability. Yeah. That's all we ever do. <laughs> um, Thank you. One of my comments when I read the brochure, Paul, was I think we should have nothing against also bringing in some older people rather than only the 25s. The There's a couple. The empty There's nesters. a couple. And you mention exercise in there a lot. And when I was in my 20s and dancing, I used to laugh when people called it exercising because I was out mountain climbing on weekends and this was just walking around. But in my later years, I found out that this was good exercise for, for the empty nesters. And I think I'm get I'm suggesting that maybe you put in the word word mild exercise instead of exercise. Okay. So people don't think of it as a gym class, but think of it Oh, by the way, we're sneaking in some mild exercise while we're having fun. That great. Too many uh, words to uh, to say. Excellent, one excellent point. point. Excellent point. And by the way, um, uh, in the brochure, uh, I, I didn't have the chance to say in my hour long uh, diatribe, uh, I didn't have the chance to say it looks like the brochure is designed specifically for SSD. Okay. But you'll notice that there are very few mentions of level or class or teaching or anything like that in there. You will notice that it's got a couple small references to SSD, but this brochure could be used for whatever your level is that you intend to share your to, to run your course in. Okay. It can be used for mainstream, it can be used for plus, it can be used for any level, okay, of a non-dancer. Okay, the people who are already dancing understand that the, the, the different level systems. Okay, but the people who are reading this on the street have no idea about our level system and all that other stuff. So the vitriol that I got from people saying, Oh, I hate SSD, I uh, okay, with, their, with their ugly, angry faces. Okay, and I've gotten a ton of that vitriol. Okay, but my point to them is. Well, don't use it as a, as a tool to sell SSD. Use it as a tool to sell whatever it is you're selling. Available at HiltonAudio.com. My comment on that, Paul, is that 
a non-dancer that we're trying to attract with this. Um, I'm not sure. S they have no idea what SSD is. No, no, and, not at all. And I'm, I'm not sure if... if Only the angry people know. I'm not sure if you're using the term social square dancing, if they understand what what you're trying to accomplish with that so i'm not using it as a level i'm using it as it as a hey come on out and come to a social square dance social not not ssd the program come I'm and hoping, dance with us we love you i'm hoping non-dancers interpret it that way <laughs> they wouldn't know how to interpret it any other way because they're not aware of our level system um Again, I used to really complain about the term fun night. I've gone to party night because fun night with angels really has the wrong connotations for non-dancers. Dan I has to stand like up. That. Hi. Dan I'm a lonely guy. Stand up and Mickey next. Go ahead. Dan. I was going to uh, uh, let Mickey go first, just in case he tackles something that I've already uh, that I was going to say. Mickey, you're up. <laughs> Well, thanks a lot. I'm on the road, so I just uh, pulled into a parking lot um, uh, to follow the discussion. I got two or three points I'd like to make. Um, first of all, I think um, what we should sell is square dance. And no matter what level and whatever, we get the people in and say, come on, let's socialize, and we're doing square dance. And because the new ones come in, and they don't know anything about the level. Okay, now I've been to Italy as well and to Croatia. And it's pretty tough. And when I, um, I understood um, Paul that he's going to do the SSD program um, in, 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 in a short time, uh, I wonder why he doesn't just go along with, with basic one or with some of the basic two calls. Um, and, you know, you can entertain people coming in fresh um, pretty good with, with that material. And the other thing is what I heard is uh, going and attracting um, people at the age of 25 and um the same thing is over here in europe everybody's going for the youth and i think that is the main mistake we're doing absolutely not. Main, and just a second let me let me say because i think the main and 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 the backbone of the activity only could be the best in middle ages let's go about mid 40 to um mid 50s why because usually they are divorced or happy married. The kids are out of the house. Um, they're settled in their job. The house or apartment, whatever, is paid off. They're looking for time together, and they've got the money. Um, they've got the time. They are settled, and they can be in there for the long term. Now, I don't say we don't need a young one. Anything younger is nice to have, and if they bring the kids and grandkids, whatever, and they grow within the activity. And I think that was the way I got into the activity and the way I realized when the high time in the 80s, 70s, 80s, when that happened. Uh, taking a look at the people who've been in the activity for 30, 40, 50 years, it is exactly that age when they were in the activity and made it big. So, And their kids stood with there. But remember, the kids and the youth, they study, they get their partners, they may not be square dancers, they get other hobbies, um, they have to move from job to job, they will maybe even have two, two or three jobs, times are getting worse, it's not, you know, that you only stay in one job and you're settled and located, uh, you may going to move, so there is a lot of flu uh, fluctuation um, um, moving and, and flowing over and crossing, dropping out, maybe coming back, back in after the kids are gone. Um, I would say it's nice to have the young ones, but the main goal and the backbone of the activity should be the best in middle agers because they're they're for good to stay. Okay, if the product is right. Yeah, so that was so far my comment. Um, so, so Mickey, you I don't know if you came in late, but that was exactly my point. I don't think oh. that we should be targeting uh, young dancers at all. We need to be targeting empty nesters that are sit of sit, uh, sick of sitting at home and staring at each other. Vicky, so that's and, exactly our target market. Now, and also, which are looking for health, where we can say, you know, this is a bonus. Um, talking about um, your body and brain uh, workouts, right? We all can combine it with socializing. 
that's the product we got to sell. Right? Uh, again, that is in that is mentioned specifically in the brochure, and at okay. the same time, like I said, I don't have any problem uh, inviting younger dancers in. Uh, but I also recognize the fact that those younger dancers were going to lose for 20 years. It's going to be no return on the activity for 20 years until they get to the point where they have their kids and they get them out to college. They're going to be empty nesters, and that's the group we need to focus on. However, okay, the pictures that I got were of younger dancers, and there's nothing wrong in advertising. Listen, there is no 55-year-old man like me that wants to re watch, look at Playboy magazine and look at a bunch of other 50 year olds. I want to look at young women. Okay. That's what sells. That's what is marketable. So I'm saying, absolutely. You are dead on correct. When it comes to, we need to be focusing on the, uh, uh, on the empty nesters. 100%. I agree with you, but putting pictures of younger dancers is not going to hurt that it's going to say, Hey, I'm, I'm a 50 year old guy and I see some, uh, some 20 something young girls out there and maybe I still have it. I don't, but maybe I do. Mickey, I have a question. Do English speaking people in Germany understand the term empty nester? Oh, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> empty nester refers to um, families. The birds flown out. The, the birds have flown out. Yeah, the, the kids okay. are off to college, off to work. Um, yeah. we're, we're, we have the house to ourselves again. So that, that term uh, empty nester is used that way. We now have a naked room, right? It was one, in, one, in one of the movies when they tried to get the boy out. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, it what's was, I don't, I, McConnelly, I think, was in there. He, they, they hired, uh, his parents hired a, a, a lady... Um, to um, fall in love with him, so he moves out of the house because they wanted him out of the house uh, with age of, I think, 38 or whatever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and when he divided with, uh, de uh, got um, separated from her because that, you know, just like in a movie, going forth and back, and he came back and said, "Where's my room?" That well, you moved out, you know, and and now uh, Daddy has his naked room or whatever. <laughs> it's just a, a cool thing. Yeah. And yeah. let's hear your three cents worth. Yeah, so uh, on the twenty dollars a night thing, um, my wife and I are currently going to a a kind of call and echo singing group. We pay twenty bucks each for two hours on a Tuesday night, um, so that seems completely in line. And or the highest I've ever been paid as a caller per person is when I put the jar by the door and said, uh, you know, what you, whatever you think is worth and didn't pay any attention to it. And they paid a lot more than I was going to charge. The other thing to Bill Silver's comment earlier about competing with, well, everybody's comment about competing with media is that's not what we're doing. We're not competing with media. We're bringing, we're building a social community. And it is really important that we keep track of that and keep track of the, the value that we're providing is in that one on or in that group of people and working with people in real time. We're not trying to compete with movies. That's a different, completely different uh, ball game. And then the final thing, and I think I've uh, fallen down on that one. So I'll leave it with those, those couple. So wh wh while we're talking about it here, here is a, a label, okay? Here's a label, put your specific information about your specific dance opportunities. I did not say class, I said dance opportunities, okay? Put it on here, put the location, put the date, put the time, put the contact information, current contact information that people can reach out to. They can reach out to you through telephone, through email, or whatever else. Take that information, put it on the sticker, take the brochure, available at hiltonaudio.com, flip it over, put the sticker over my stuff. And now that looks like it's yours. You made it. You're handing out a thick quality, high-end, first-class brochure. 
I'll sign this one and I'll sell it for a higher price for anybody who wants to buy it. Uh, but the point is, is again, don't buy my brochure. I don't care. Okay. I don't care about your personal thoughts about me. I'm finally going to be me. But take these tools and use it to develop your program. Make it yours personally. Don't buy my brochure. Make your own damn brochure. It'll cost you a whole hell of a lot more than I'm paying for it because you ain't buying 10000 at a time. Okay? But the point is, is do something. Get butts through the door. You don't have to like my terminology. You don't have to like me. It's not about me. It's about getting butts through the door for our activity as a whole. Speaking of making your own brochures with Paul's, with, with good thoughts from what Paul has in his, um, let me recommend two sources for giving you ideas on design. The first is on designing flyers. Um, on our series here, two years ago, we had Aaron Byers who is very familiar with the square dance activity, but her professional life is is a graphic designer. And she gave us an excellent talk on square, designing square dance flyers, eight and a half by 11 flyers, which included showing a lot of flyers that looked good until she explained, but it could be better with this, this, and this. It's an excellent talk to go back to and listen. Um, the other resource, is one that I just discovered yesterday, <laughs> going to dosido.com and way down at the bottom, it says that this website was designed by, I forgot who it was, but if you go, you'll find it. And I clicked on that. And this gentleman has a video on using a particular piece of software to design that he's not involved with the company, but uses the product regularly and was giving i haven't finished watching i'll go back and watch it because it was interesting but a good talk on how to design a better brochure um a more interesting and more, pro more professional looking one it's a good resource if you're yeah that's ray in. owens ray that's owens. ray owens and he has fantastic material up there and he makes it available for public domain use so take it and use it and talk to ray and get his feedback because he is absolutely as enthusiastic and as crass as I am. Um, he will absolutely do anything he can to help the activity. Again, Paul's got the words in his brochure, but these other sources give you help with the artistic um, and marketing end of, of getting people involved. Let me show you something on my screen here for one second, please. Go for it. All right, let me find it. Uh, come on, I just had it. One second, folks, I apologize. <laughs> okay, why can't I share this? Oh, right here, sorry, I apologize. Not a professional presenter here, shame on me. Okay, this, this is a resource that I use. It's called Vistaprint. Make your own damn brochure. Don't pay me, okay? Here, you wanna make 25? That's $1.64 a unit, $1.64, all right? It's a lot of money, but if you wanna do your own thing and you don't wanna involve Paul Cody because he's a jackass, don't use Paul Cody stuff or go to HiltonAudioProducts.com, okay? Get the brochure, get the, get the door hanger, buy an MA. Get the CD by me, okay? But bottom line is, is what I'm saying is use this information here to your to, to, to help yourself. You don't have to include me. Go ahead and just make it about you, all right? Use my stuff, use my words, use the, use the, uh, the, the photos from, from, from uh, Ray Owens. The sources are there, okay? You don't have to give me a damn bit of credit. You don't have to accept that I even exist, but you have to do something to help save this damn activity. This activity has made me, believe it or not, this activity has made me a better man. 
You think I'm bad now? You should have seen me before, sweet ass. Okay. I was a horrible, horrible person that was created from horrible, horrible circumstances. And I, I do apologize for the man I was, but I make no apologies for the man I am now. In my announcement of this particular session on Facebook groups, I mentioned that we all agree that we need more dancers coming through the door. And Paul has given us some good ideas that might help. I suggest, no help. <laughs> I suggest that in 52 weeks, we 52 sessions from now, we have a gathering and people can tell us the results of, of how these, this approach has worked. And I hope we hear some positive results. I'll, I'll have some, something new to sell at that point. <laughs> yeah, I may not give you permission to sell on it on this venue. Uh, any other comments before I tell Paul a little about the critique that that I was given? Go for it. All righty, Paul. Um, unfortunately, you can't make changes until next time until you sell these, but. Um, I handed this, your brochure, to a friend who's 25, has nothing to do with square dancing other than has heard about it because knows I'm a caller, whatever that is. Um, and has two undergraduate degrees somewhat related to marketing. Um, and is working on a graduate degree and is working in the field, almost the field she wants to be. I wanted to say they, I didn't want you to know the gender. Um, and told her that it's not my brochure, it's a person I know created it and you don't have to hold back and, and, and be um, walking on eggshells to not offend me. Uh, so we could get an honest critique. And guess what her first critique was, Paul? Something you said that 25-year-olds didn't mind. It's too cluttered. Um, hey, I told you my reasons. I, you did. You did. She said too busy. Um, uh, oh, the next one is... You definitely told me the reasons. Not enough contrast between the text and the and the people. You've got a good reason for that. I understand. She didn't because I didn't brief her on any of that. Um, she was concerned about the repetitiveness of what if. If somehow you could make that a, a title that all these things were untitled so you didn't have to repeat that word. So she didn't have to read that word over and that phrase over and over again. Just... Again, I don't need a rebuttal. I'm just throwing out comments of one particular person. I appreciate it. And I, and I take them all to heart. Um, but if you uh, listen to a advertisement on the radio, they make it a point to say that if you don't say the telephone number eight times, they won't remember it. Okay. It was specifically, I mean, again, I'm not saying that it's perfect, but, it, but there's a reason for everything that I did in that brochure. Everything. Every, everything that I used as a description, it was specifically from my research when I did that program for Tri-State. Um, it, it was all in there with a very specific intent. And the whole idea was what if, what if, what if, what if, and I, and I, and I, I gave them, uh, I took away their reasons to say no. And at the very end, okay, now do something. Now go ahead and do it. And my answer is, yeah, I will continue to refine this product if I ever have a chance to sell it again, okay? But my answer at the same time is don't use mine. Do better. Make your own. Spend the money. Make the investment. Be willing to wait three or four years to get your investment investment back. Go ahead and do it. What I'm I'll, buy, is I'll, I'll, buy, I'll buy it. Try okay? and find other people who are willing to give an honest critique don't absolutely sure absolutely um, i had a 10 year old 
I had a 10 year old that I handed a copy to the, of the brochure to. And I said to her, she was the daughter of a caller. And I said to her, do me a favor, would you read this? And would you tell me your points on it? And she came back to me and she said, well, you said eight to 80. She says, I started at five. Well, five to 50 doesn't sound quite as good. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, and, and that's why I picked eight to 80. It just sounds right. Okay. Um, but again, I'm asking for the opinions of you, all of you here, except for Vernon. Um, I'm asking for the opinions of people, young, old, everybody else in between. And I'm saying, give me your thoughts. And when I can afford to do it again, I'll do it again. Okay. And some things will change and some things won't. But, but everything is there for a reason. It might, 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 the reason might not make sense to you, but it's, it's very, it was very well. I've been working on this for six years. I, I've been thinking about this for six years. Uh, but those of you who are not aware of my personal situation, all I can say is I wasn't allowed to do it. I was controlled. And now I'm not controlled anymore. And you're going to see uh -oh. a lot of shit Paul's coming out, out of control. Me. Paul's out of control. Yep, I am. Um, her, her next comment was that you've got more information than you need. Now, I realize why you have it. But her thing is that this should be inviting people to want to find out more information rather than putting it all there. I can't say that I agree. Well, that, true. That's what the hangar's for. I can't say that I agree. I'm just quoting what she said. Yep. Um, this I probably do agree with. You've used a lot of, she said, you have a list of, of current entertainers. Um, she thinks the list is too long. You don't need to show that many um, to prove your point. And um, I kind of agree. I, I only, you know, the fact that I only recognize half of the people on there doesn't mean a thing because I'm, I'm past that age, but um, maybe just a smattering of short in the list, especially the duplicates dummy. And I didn't yes. even catch that one. Agreed. <laughs> um, Agreed. I mean, I love Elton John, but I don't love him twice. Uh, and, but the thing is, is, uh, is again, my point is, and you made this point earlier, Don, you want to see people dancing that you can relate to. Exactly. You want to see Joe the plumber with the, with his ass crack hanging out. <laughs> okay. You want to see the father. So the length of that list was to try and find somebody that each different person reading the brochure could relate to. Maybe they can only relate to two or three. Michael Bublé, really? Okay. Well, or 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 Billie Eilish? Come on, cut it out. They don't square dance to Billie Eilish. Yes, we do. Okay. And many of those people I don't even like. But I know that somebody else considering coming to dance with us does like that person. That's why that's the, and again, I'm taking everything that you say to heart. Okay. I'm accepting the critique. Absolutely. But I will also like to explain the reasons why. So people understand yeah. there's, it was actually a well thought out process. It might not be exactly the, the final product that it can be in the future, but bottom line is now that I'm free, I'm going to do something. The, um, her final comment was, I like the use of the images, but maybe you shouldn't use quite so many. Now, I know why you're using so many, because you want to fill the complete background so it's not easily copyable. Yes, sir. Um, exactly. I was having some fun staying up later than I should last night, trying to scan an OCR with partial success. I'll send you some of the humorous things that came out. I did it. I did it. And and yes, you can certainly still scan it, especially when you do it at a high resolution. I, I scanned it <clears> at 200 DPI. Um, but the point is, is that most people won't have the technological expertise to do that as well. And even at 1200 DPI, it does not come out printed the same quality as as the actual brochure. Well, I was just trying to, to get the text that you're offering for free. I was trying to OCR the stuff and the contrast it didn't catch too much of it. <laughs> good, good. And again, anybody who wants the text, just send me an email, paulahiltonaudio.com, where you can get this beautiful door hanger. And um, you can, and I will be happy to send it to you for free. Um, and then again, uh, the, the, uh, 
the CD I won't send for free, but I will send it to you at a discounted price for the month of August. Um, by the way, people, August is one third over, so you'd better get around to it. Um, I see some hands up, Stephen and then Chris. Yeah, um, I have a couple questions. Um, first of all, um, how many of the brochures have you sold yet? Under a thousand. Okay. Uh, have you sent them out to clubs? through their I, websites and stuff. I have, I have not sent them out d directly. I have offered a free sample to anybody who wants it. Mm -hmm. and, I send it out with, and I send it out with a letter explaining the reasons why it is the way it is. Okay. okay. And it explains yeah. to them why, uh, why it's so busy, why it's so, lo those other things. It explains those things. But yeah, I send it out and I send it out for free the next day. And um, again, no charge for it. My only, my only rule is uh, don't digitally duplicate it. Um, my, 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 um, my, uh, what's his name? Uh, my international representative in, uh, in, uh, Australia, Nev McLaughlin. Um, he wanted me to send him a digital copy. So he could send it to each of the clubs. I said, absolutely not. I will send you physical copies and you're welcome to send them to the clubs but I will not promote any kind of digital distribution of the product. Otherwise I lose everything I've invested. Right. Uh, the other, the other thing is when you, when you ask the, the 10 year old about to comment on it and she said she learned when she was five made me think of the, the line uh, kids from ages two to 92. We have a 92 year old in our club in San Antonio that uh, he, he dances ballroom uh, competition three times a week. <laughs> he's 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 going like crazy right now. I, I like two to nine two, except two at a square dance wouldn't be appropriate. So that's that. Yeah, I, mean, I, know. I, I love I love I love the way it flows off the tongue, but uh, but I have to make it something that's actually well right. legit. <laughs> I know. Chris, yeah, I know. Chris, hi. Um, I was going to say that. Um, uh, and uh, some of this was over in the chat comments uh, with uh, uh, Kevin Bursing, I think, was who I was talking to. But um, the uh, there's there's a difference between saving square dancing uh, and saving your existing club. And so this this marketing uh, campaign with uh, the images of the young people and uh, well, I guess in particular that uh, that aspect of it. Uh, I, I think is more geared for, and I highly uh, advocate, uh, new clubs. You're, you're starting a new group, not uh, necessarily using this uh, particular marketing campaign. I, I mean, it's full. It's chock full of all kinds of good things, but uh, but just the but just the angle of we want to attract people who are you know not 70 and whatever. When the when the dancers uh, w you know when you get some customers show up for this thing. If they come in and it's a bunch of 80-year-old grandmas and you know milk and cookies, uh, and that's uh, really not the picture you were painting, they're going to feel like they were bait and switched, and they're not going to like it, and and they might even resent it a little bit. Uh, but that's not going to go. What what you really need to do is you really need to start a new group and use this to advertise that, and uh, then when people show up, they're going to see other people who saw this that look like them and. And by the way, the fact that nobody there knows how to do circle to the left yet is not a problem. And no, you don't need angels. In fact, well, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't say this out loud. Uh, I hate angels. But you, well, I don't hate angels. But uh, they're uh, let's just say it. Uh, they can be uh, uh, problematic, and you need to uh, use them uh, carefully. But uh, but anyway, my point is, uh, this is uh, th this kind of campaign is good. For new groups, and in fact, it's new groups that you want. I mean, the old group—I love the old groups uh, uh, to death. I mean, literally to death. Um, but um, they—you um, you love us till we die, is that it? Well, uh, um, I probably wouldn't be talking to you right now uh, if it weren't for what the uh, what the square dance community and um, I'm talking uh, mostly older dancers. In you know the clubs that I call for and stuff, uh, uh, you know, did for me uh, not that long ago when I had some severe medical uh, challenges. But so anyhow, the um, uh, you know I, I could never say enough nice things about those people, and they really are. I mean, you know, they're just genuinely wonderful. But anyway, 
the uh, but but that but the, the the point of this marketing push here is we need new people and new groups and and this kind of campaign is really geared more for them so just to sort of have that in mind when you're thinking about you know saving square dancing uh, doesn't is a, a little broader uh, uh, effort than um, trying to keep your existing clubs going they they yeah. might they might they might go for some of this they might not but but uh, uh, you really need to make your own uh, new thing and grow it that way that's what I think my, my experience is that most of the old school uh, leadership is going to fight this tooth and nail that's really the way it's it that's the way I feel it's going to be um, I really feel that at the same time uh, we have to kind of be like the phoenix and rise from the ashes and start start anew okay a new life and uh, if I can help do that in some way then that's what I want to do um, again can I physically go out and do this myself no I'm I, I like you like you Chris uh, I have health issues that are, are going to be problematic in in many of aspects of me actually physically getting out there and doing this but I want to do what I can to make a contribution to help the activity that saved my life as far as angels I, I kind of agree with you that they can be more of a detriment than a help absolutely a hundred percent a hundred percent they are when they are i have better. when i have had new classes starting and have had talking to people that were potential angels before say the night before at a club gathering i would generally explain to them what i want what i expect of them my main job for the first several lessons especially the first night is to get them to get the new dancers to listen to me and focus on what I say not to expect somebody by the shoulder to push them around and what have you I tell them that if a dancer is a having a problem and there's a line of four facing a line of three they might have a good idea to go fill that spot but if there's a line of three facing a line of three and somebody chasing you around, they're not sure which spot to fill. The, the, the angels should be passive, not active. Um, we could just, probably do a whole session just on angels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, angels angels um, are very, very difficult to control. Uh, I have a very simple rule when I'm working with dancers and I have angels involved. The rule is as simple as this. Whoever has the microphone is the only one who talks, the only one who talks. And I will hand them the microphone and give them the opportunity to talk, but only the person that has the microphone speaks. But okay? they can push Be their corner. Okay, because, because what happens is they start to confuse the person because as much as we want to get a younger group of dancers in here, if they're trying to listen to two sources at the same time, things get messed up. Now, uh, I went and I guest called at a club in Houston a few months back, and they literally had two people, two people standing outside the square trying to help one man get through it. Well, first of all, we have to respect the fact that there are certain people that will never square dance. That's just fact of life. OK, we have to give them a, a gift certificate to go out and go bowling because they're not going to square dance. OK, we have to be able to make that distinction as leaders in the activity okay we have to be able to say this ain't for you we love you but this ain't for you okay but my answer to that club was i removed those two people from the from outside the square and i said leave them alone i said unless you intend to go out and dance with him at every dance that he attends for the rest of his life you are not helping him he needs to either figure this out on his own or he needs to go bowling all right and i worked with him personally and i helped him in a way that i could kind of covertly help him in the square without singling him out and i spoke to him in between the tips and i said to him i didn't say that he couldn't do this i didn't say that he was not capable of it but i did say it's going to take a lot of special effort on your part you're going to have to spend some time reading. You're going to have to spend some time in terminations. You're going to have to stop second guessing yourself. Because half the time that you're making a mistake, it's because you've second guessed yourself. Okay. 99 times out of 100, if you're confused, just walk forward and you're going to be right. Okay. Not every time, 
but 99 times out of 100, you're going to be you're going to be able to resolve your own issue by just stepping forward, and you'll find an empty spot. And that's most likely, if you're a good caller, where he needs to end up. Paul, that brings an image to my mind of of a trap I got into many times. You're you're trying to walk people through stuff, teach them, and there's one person not getting it, and you yell, "No, no, turn around." And of course, that person wasn't listening before and still isn't. But at least three other people turn around. <laughs> and now you've got a worse situation. And, and so I'll say something along the lines of, and so all of the dons are facing to their right, right? <laughs> okay. And, you know, I'll, I'll say something slightly humorous. And again, some people could take more humor than others. Okay. But in that particular case, that man was looking for guidance. And I was happy to give it to him over the microphone without having to have people hurting him in the square. Stephen, you have your hand up. And you're muted. Yeah, I have to unmute first. <laughs> um, yeah, as anytime I've angeled, I've always, uh, when I see people struggling, I take them aside afterwards and say, don't be afraid to ask the caller to repeat or ask him afterwards to show you a move. So sometimes they come to me and ask me, how do I do that? And uh, sometimes I politely show them. Other times I tell them, well, I take them up to the caller and let's and ask them, let's show them how to do this. And um, that way, you know, it's I'm not pushing them through during the square. I'm helping them afterwards or having them directly ask the caller for the help because that's who they should be asking. That's a good approach, so, Stephen. And you should probably add, you're brave enough to ask the question. There are probably a few people that aren't brave enough to ask the same question, but have the same question. If you ask the caller to answer it, it'll get those shy people also. It'll help right. those shy people also. So basically, I, when it comes to, and, be, and what, before I start this, I'd, I'd kind of like to, uh, we could digress and do this all afternoon, um, but that's just simply not what we're here for. We're here for my sales pitch. Um, no, okay. <laughs> but, but, I, but, I, but I have told my dancers at, at, at a learning level, I say to them simply, listen, you're going to make mistakes. Mistakes are okay, okay? My goal is, if you're going to make a mistake, don't make it a mistake of inaction. Make it a mistake of action. Do something, okay? Try and make a decision. Try and go somewhere, okay? And if you're going to make a mistake, make it the best mistake of the night. Make it the best mistake possible. And I literally, in my case, carry sticky stars, little foam stars, and I have them in red, blue, and gold. And during the course of the evening, I'll see something that just blows my mind for a mistake. And I will take out one of those sticky stars and I will go up and I will attach it to their badge as the best mistake of the night. And I literally have one lady in Houston who has kept that star on her badge as a badge of honor because she made the best mistake of the night and we all enjoyed it and we all learned from it. Along those lines, when I try to convince people, well, when I do demos, when I have people that do demos, you know, the, the, the club dancers say, well, I'm, what if I can't do what you're at calling and I make a mistake? I don't want to be embarrassed up there. And, you know, just call easy stuff. And I, I tell them that, you know, if you're a total non-dancer, you don't know the difference between a square through and a relay the deucey. Um, so whatever I call, I'm not going to call easy stuff. I'm going to call typical stuff. And if you make a mistake, that's great. I don't want you to practice this. I want the people watching to realize that it's not a performance group, that if you guys make a mistake, it's okay. You're still smiling and having fun and regrouping and going. I don't want the people watching to think that they could only join the group if they're perfectionists. Again, they should be able to relate to what you're doing and making an occasional mistake works. Amanda, speak to me. Come on, girl. I miss you. How are y'all this morning? I'm doing great. Neil, you were wonderful at the, at the Gatlinburg convention. 
Oh, thank you. But I just, you know, Amanda's a young, a young caller. She's, she's a, 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 by profession, she does something with insects. She works 80 hours a week. Uh, calling is not her priority, but she's doing wonderful things when she is calling. And, um, and, and again, we need to have younger callers. We need to encourage younger callers, especially callers that can carry a tune, no offense, Clark, um, that, will, that will be able to present to the act to non-dancers that we can go out and have a great time together. And again, what Clark does, people can go out and have a great time with Clark. Um, and, and he is amazing at the higher levels. Uh, he's written stuff that I can't even read, never mind call. Uh, but bottom line is the younger folks like Amanda are the future of the activity. But when she's working 80 hours a week, she doesn't have time to dedicate to the activity. Um, Daryl, you had your hand up. What did, what I did, did I did. Uh, first, Paul, very nice presentation. Thank you, sir. Some very good points come up. I just want to digress just a little tiny bit and go back to the angels. Uh, I like angels, but I let them know that I can teach the people how to dance. Only they can make club members out of them. Exactly. Exactly. That's, that's the important difference there. I like to have them there, not because I need the help in instructing, but they need to be there if they expect those people to join the club at the end of it. They have, have to make those have people feel, like, feel yeah. like they are a part of the group before they ever get out of the classes. Have them sell the activity, have them sell the club, but let you lead. Exactly. That's, that's perfect, um, Daryl. I should have left it, put that into my comments. One of the things I do tell them, though, is dancing wise, the best way you can help is by setting it a good example. Be in the right place at the right time. Do your part correctly. And, you know, give them a show, show them what, you know, what a dancer does rather than a, a caller assistant. And, and make it a dance. Stop with the damn technical crap for the beginners. They don't need to learn 27 versions of a do -si do okay? Let them swing. It's dancing. Let them twirl on a promenade. It's dancing, okay? I personally am a huge proponent, proponent of the forearm grip because it gives you a give and take. It gives you a counterbalance, okay? The hands up style of dancing and the hands down style of dancing don't give you that. Don't get okay. into your next session yet, Paul. Okay. But what I'm saying is, 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 is bottom line is we forget that it is square dancing. It is not square dance technical stepping. Okay. We need to, one of the biggest concerns I have in Italy, I'm teaching six programs in Italy. I'm teaching three leaders in Italy, and I do not want Italy to become what the rest of Europe has become which is in many cases all about the definitions that call lab presented and they treat as a bible okay Good. i want them to dance first to be entertained first and then get te the technical shit down all they want i don't care if they ever learn more than ssd if they want to by god go ahead and do it but I want to perform and I want to give them a excellent dancing experience. Paul, as far as you're picking or talking to Clark about singing, not being able to stay on key or whatever the terminology was. I didn't go that far. No, but there are two types of people that can't carry a tune. Those people like Clark that know it and those people that don't know it. Um, Amen. <laughs> we're much better off with Clark. When I have when I have new dancers, I, I and I and I give them their first singing call, and I sing from the first song from the first tip on. Every single tip ends with a singing call. Remember when you a square a singing call used to be the icing on the cake, the relaxing part. You remember that? Once upon a time, we treated the singing call as the as as the icing on the cake. It was their reward for being worked hard on the patter. We relaxed it a bit and we did the singing call and people enjoyed the dance. Now, 
uh, unfortunately, the activity has swung to the far left, far right, whatever you want to call it. And it's become all about the technical aspects of calling. But Let's I tell back to the far middle, right? <laughs> yes. But what I tell the dancers when I give them the first singing call, I said, listen, this next three and a half minutes is going to be a singing call. It's going to be a tune that you probably recognize. If you know the tune and you can sing, please sing along with me. If you know the tune and you can't sing, please just mouth the words. Paul, I not only do singing calls every tip on a party night and beginning of class, but I believe in rotating partners from the very beginning that some people don't. And I don't do it the first that, night, I do it the second night. Uh, and when we get to the first singing call, I'm going to say, this is going to be exactly the stuff you've been doing with one exception. Eventually, I'm going to have you swinging with your corner. And when I say promenade home, it's to the man's home position. And we'll repeat that several times. And if you're lucky by the end, you'll have your original part. I usually say if you're lucky by the end or unlucky, if that's the case, you'll have your original partner back. And then at the end, I'll say, how many got your original partner? And everybody feels, yay, we've, and, and you do fig choreography that they can't miss. Uh, hum humor is so important in square dance calling, especially with new dancers, okay? I say very similar to you. I say, okay, the best thing about square dancing for me is once you swing her, you own her, okay? <laughs> and once you swing her, she has no choice but to go home with you, okay? And I say these things with, with, a, with a degree of humor. And again, I recognize that some of the most uh, puritanical folks say, oh my God, that's a horrible thing to say. Uh, whatever, whatever, okay? Get over it, okay? This Be is my careful. program. If you want to hire me, hire me for my program. If you don't like my program, then fire me, okay? Be but bottom line is, humor. you swing her, you own her, you get to take her home. That's never had happened in my life. Okay. Be careful with humor. Humor is different from in Europe and in Germany and different in the UK and such. Um, Agreed. But bottom line is that's who I am. And I'm and not going to apologize for it. When, when I'm on stage, my humor tends to be different than most people. They enjoy it once they understand who I am. Otherwise, they think, is he serious? And the best advice I had once was driving home from a dance with my first wife and she said take care daryl <laughs> she said donald if you're ever on stage and have the urge to tell a joke don't <laughs> people just didn't understand me anyway yep. and yep. by the lack of grins on your face you don't either or you've heard me tell that story too often no i'm no, going to no, try no. to shut up because we've been going far too long here for today but i'm sorry <laughs> I'm sorry. That wasn't my intention. It wasn't to take my, my intention wasn't to take to be, take too much of your time. It was just to hopefully, whether you agree with my methods, I hope if nothing else, you see my passion. Okay. I, I I'm going to, I'm going to do something. All right. Love me or hate me. I'm going to do something. Okay. Just like I tell the dancers in the square, if you're going to make a mistake, make it a mistake of action, not a mistake of inaction. And that's the same thing I'm saying to you all right now. Bottom line is do something. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good thing to live by. Okay. Don't put yourself first. Yeah, I can get up there and I can sing like a superstar. And oftentimes I do. Okay. But it's always with the end intention of having them have a fantastic experience and want to leave the room singing the same song with me. That's great. That's great, Paul. I know that I tell, yeah, www.dosido.com. <laughs> Don will never let me sell again. <laughs> you had I, love, I love you all. I do love you all. Uh, I, I know I tell dancers that if they're going to make a mistake, do it with conviction. Amen. Don't doubt yourself. Do Stop, it. Pick, pick, up, pick up some sticky stars. I promise yeah. they'll work for you, Gene. I think that's a great idea, fantastic idea. The other I thing I found interesting is when people think, oh, my God, and this is more for 
experienced dancers too, or semi-experienced. When you think you've made a mistake and made the square, don't look apologetic. Look with confidence and look around it and you'll see at least three other people thinking it was their fault. Uh, it's part of the game, but. I, I always tell new dancers to, uh, if they make a mistake, look around and point to somebody else. <laughs> Blame them. That's and I amazing. also say we hardly ever shoot dancers on the very first night. There you go. So there's some silly rule against it. I always say that under my breath. There's some silly rule against it here. There you go. It's all that's all performance, folks. That's yeah. all performance. Okay. You're using humor in your performance. And yes, you have to be careful with it. Okay. Absolutely. One of my biggest regrets, I, I had a dancer that I absolutely loved. He was my class clown. He was my he was my uh uh abbot to my Costello. He was wonderful. And we were working on Relive the Ducey one night. This is going back 15, 20 years at least. And I jokingly, back in the days of when I wore a cowboy hat put a cowboy hat out on the stage uh, upside down. And I said, okay, you make the same mistake again, you put a quarter in the hat, okay? Well, uh, his wife was having a particularly difficult time with the call. And I tried to, if I, if I have somebody make, make a mistake on a call, I always try to come up with a different way to explain it, to try and give it from their frame of reference. And uh, bottom line is he kept on coming up with a quarter and a quarter and a quarter and a quarter. Finally, he came up. And again, I'm thinking my class clown, my, my, my abbot is, 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 is playing along with me. He came up and he took his entire wallet out of his pocket and he threw it into my hat. Okay. And I thought we were doing great except he was pissed off. He was pissed and I lost that couple for that humor. And I loved that couple. They were two of my favorite dancers in the club and I lost them. And so I regret that, okay? But it was never ever any intent or malice or anything like that. It was just trying to help. And so sometimes humor can go awry. Oh yeah. One of the things that you have to watch out for, too, is is you're trying to help somebody and, and you, you know, somebody that you have a good relationship with and, and you sort of yell, of, hey, Paul, turn around. Um, and somebody later will say, you know, why are you picking on Paul? That's not nice. And you say, well, you, Paul and I have an agreement and he understands and we're good friends and the thing is, the other 25 people in the hall don't know that you and Paul have a good arrangement. And they say, yeah. oh, my God, is he going to pick on me next? Yeah. Um, be careful of that. Absolutely. 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 I know that, <clears throat> something that, new, that new callers don't have the experience with. As, you, as you've been calling for, for 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 years in your case, Don, uh, bottom line is uh, 55. There you go. Uh, we develop a certain um, understanding of what we're doing to our dancers. You know, all of us want to protect our dancers down to the down to the nth degree. Okay, we have to establish uh, you know relationships with them. Uh, that's one of the hardest things for me because again, I was a man who was in severe depression my entire life. Um, so uh, when I had the microphone in my hand, I was bulletproof. Nobody could touch me. I was bulletproof. The moment I put that microphone down and I was told that I needed to walk the halls and shake hands and kiss babies, um, I, I felt that I had nothing of value to say. Hmm. Uh, I, I felt that I was an absolute nobody when I didn't have that microphone in my hand. I, I wrote an article that was put in a couple of different magazines, American Square Dance Magazine and the magazine down in Australia, called My Microphone is My Security Blanket. And that's exactly the way I treated it. Um, I literally would get physically ill. I mean, physically ill, go into the toilet and puke because I had to walk up and down the hallway and try and say hello to people. Um, so we all have our strong points. We all have our weak points. And instead of going to dawn school and showing off that I could hit the high note on oh, Danny boy, I needed to be listening to dawn and learning and getting a, becoming a better caller and a better person from my experience listening to Dawn, okay? Um, if I were ever to run a school, it would be a school that would be not popular by many people. 
most of the schools run the schools in a way that they try to get you to come back year after year after year after year. Okay. If you're coming back to my school year after year after year after year, bottom line, you're not a very good caller. Okay. And or I'm, I'm not, not a good teacher, but. Okay. And, and in that case, I'm not going to be a person. And this is why I'm not running a school is I, I'm not going to be somebody who is polite and concerned about your feelings. If you're a crappy caller, I'm going to tell you you're a crappy caller. And that's why I'm not doing caller schools because again, people go to caller schools to be told how good they are, not how bad they are. Okay. And that unfortunately does not help them become better. A caller school that I went to with it, Earl Johnston was one of the four or five instructors. Um, Earl got up at the very beginning. If you want to hear about how good you are at the end of this school, why don't you come up now and I'll tell you and then save me and yourself some time and you can just go home right now. I'll be Amen. willing to tell you how good you are. If you want to Amen. learn something, listen. Amen. Earl wasn't, Earl wasn't too bad at pulling, at not pulling punches either. <laughs> I was invited to call in uh, Germany, and uh, it was an opportunity that I seriously considered until they started to tell me what they expected of me as a caller, you know, a uh, choreographic uh, challenge and this and that, and that's not who I am. And so I finally said, thank you for the invitation, but no thank you. If you want me to come and call my dance, I'll come and call my dance. But if you want me to come and be somebody else who I'm not, that's not what I want to do. So I turned down that opportunity to work in Germany. Um, and I will continue to turn down that kind of thing because that's not who I am. Okay. I'm there to give you an entertaining uh, dance, not a mental challenge. That's not what I am. Don, you've known me forever. You know, I don't have three modules in my head. You know that I can't cross and uncross and cross and uncross with your mental image. Okay. I am, I am the embodiment of a true sight caller. And I don't say that with pride. I say that with, with, with absolute um, understanding that it has handicapped me as a caller. Okay. I don't ever recommend that somebody learn to be a sight caller first because they will not get the mechanics. And I stopped learning 30 well, years I ago. I, I proceeded on to site calling, and now it's a combination. To quote Jim Mayo, though, Paul, what my mentor, or one of the main ones, as one of mine, when you go to get to call a guest tip or even a guest area, don't try to impress them with stuff that's pushing your limits. Just call your dance, because that's different than their caller usually does, and that will entertain them just fine. The, calling your dance because it's different for them and that's why i've never called in europe because i couldn't give them the dance that they wanted me to give them i could give them my dance and they weren't interested in that uh but the but i have called in europe and you just call your thing and it's different enough for them and um not according to the person that was hiring me i was given specific things that i needed to do and at that point i said thank you no that's not me <laughs> At least you guys had an understanding. Yes. What were the specific things? Uh, it was it was specifically on on choreography and, and challenge, uh, not not the level challenge, but the difficulty of the choreography. And uh, quite frankly, I don't have that difficulty in my in my uh, repertoire. Uh, you know, people who enjoy dancing to me are the people who are not the ones who are looking for technical challenge. They're looking to be entertained, and I can entertain the hell out of them but I can't give them the mental challenge that they were looking for in that particular group. It got very, very quiet. Is it time for me to hold something up and try and sell again? <laughs> or is it time to say goodbye? The quietness I'm hearing is a good sign that it's time to say goodbye. Time to say good night for the evening, for the morning, for the afternoon. Oh my God. Um, Again, Paul, thank you. It's been my pleasure. It's been my pleasure. I, I, I hope that if nothing else, you understand that everything I've said today, crass or not, it came from the heart. And that's what's most important to me. I don't understand that. I'll give you hell later, but no, <laughs> that's fine. Um, thanks again. Thank you guys for hanging in this far. 
um, going for almost three what, 11 to 12 to one almost three hours is ridiculous but that's what we do sometimes it's fun sorry it's fun. I apologize it's as I fun. say as I say some of us learn stuff from here and some of us just use it as a once a week social gathering of people of like thoughts and it works great that way too anyway I'm I'm out of here. Take care, guys. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, John. Bye, Bye guys. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you.